welcome back, Ishes of Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Let's talk about this book. Okay. <laughs> We're on the road to Dark Crisis, and a while back we talked about the Infinite Frontier. Was I on that episode? <laughs> yeah. Oh, I don't even remember. Don't worry. Yeah. It's, it's, according to some, chapter one of three, and me, chapter one of five? Oh. Or six? On the road to Dark Crisis? This is chapter two. It's a lot of on the road to Dark Crisis. It's a long road. It was a big road. I mean, Dark Crisis. Tempest Fugonaut is building towards... <laughs> right. Right. He's not in it. I'm going to just throw that out there right now. If you yeah. were expecting the Dark Crisis written by Joshua Williamson to reflect in any way the Dark Crisis promised at the end of <laughs> Death Metal, you are in for disappointment. Because none of those Went things happened. in a different direction. You might say that. <laughs> you might say that once Scott Snyder left, uh, so too did all of his continuity. Now, this book does seek to reconcile not just Scott, and not just Grant Morrison, but everything. And I'm like, this is, small book, this is shorter than that. How do you get that working? And it's because it's written by Joshua Williamson and Dennis Culver. Two of them work together on this Thing. I thought it was just hand wavy bullshit. Uh, oh no, it is. But like, in, but but at least they bullet pointed all the bullshit, mm -hmm. and they check all the boxes. This book is very much house cleaning slash storytelling slash event building. It does a lot of work for it being this short, and yeah. it, this has the potential to be a normal sized episode or the longest episode we've ever done in our lives. <laughs> uh oh. Which is why I've been kicking this can down the road since we did Infinite Frontier. When I did Infinite Frontier, I went, oh no. That means we're gonna have to do Justice League Incarnate. <laughs> is this a Justice League book or is this a Justice League Incarnate book? Like it's its own thing. Okay, so there was a team and it's about these characters called Justice Incarnate. Mm. And they will, at the end of this book, rename themselves Justice League Incarnate. And I'm like, why? <laughs> why weren't you already that? Or why would you make the distinction? Who cares? Because they want to increase their prestige by giving them a Justice League. Why not? And you know title. what? It, it's innocuous, it hurts nobody, feel free. Right. Sure. What this really is, is a secret multiversity sequel. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. So. That's a book we, that's, we did that we season never did one. It. Oh yeah. no. No, no, no. We read the first issue <laughs> on another show. Oh. <laughs> within the same like month okay. of the channel launching. Right. And we were so nonplussed by it. Right. We were so turned off. We were we, we that was the beginning of the hate for Comic Pop. Was we were like, I don't like multiversity. And the audience went, Whoa! But that's impossible. <laughs> but that's impossible. <laughs> Do you understand what Grant Morrison is doing with this book? No. How important multiversity is? No, I can't acclimate myself. I have no rhyme or reason, and I can't get my footing. And they're like, you're not supposed to. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's very uncomfortable. Why would you want to understand what you're reading? Well, this, right. is, this is a book that's for comic book fans. I'm not one. I was, but we were... Part of this, the, the conceit of the show is two people don't read comics. Let's see if we can get them into it. Oh, read nope. multiversity. Well, that's not going to work. <laughs> but multiversity has a number of issues I have. I've not necessarily changed my mind about multiversity, mm. but I have softened my opinions about multiversity mm. in the ensuing decades since we read it. <laughs> and uh, the first issue, I, I might add. Right. But... We don't really need to know everything about multiversity in order to understand this book, except you absolutely do. <laughs> oh, good. But we're not going to bother. I'm not going to get too deep in the weeds with multiversity. Just to just to say that multiversity was a book written by Grant Morrison that sought to answer problems that Morrison had with the industry, as they often do, and often wants to address, mm -hmm. and often shows up every decade or so to try and iron out. And multiversity was their recent attempt to do that. I applaud you. On the attempt. Fine. You know, and maybe it made fans. I know mm. it made fans of super obscure, random well, shit. I remember <laughs> the art was good. The art is good. Well, yeah. uh, and the art, no. Yes, the art is fine. Well, in the first issue, yes. The, the art fluctuated, mm. uh, as it does with this, in fact. Uh, there are quite a few artists on this title. They'll be featured at the end of the episode. Uh, but some of it works, some of it not so much. Mm. But uh, they all do their part. Mm -hmm. And I hesitate to 
criticize Morrison's use of artists, not their professionalism, but rather their utilitarianism. Like, as far as Morrison is concerned, the art is almost secondary right. to what is being done. And right. I'm like, the art is paramount to what is being done. Because if the reader doesn't want to look at it, you have lost them. It must be, at minimum, good. But my words are enough. Yes. Right. Now, I'm sure Morrison has nothing but the utmost of respect for artists and the marriage of words and pictures. That's what they're all about. Right. But Multiversity is a, let's call it mixed bag. But it also is borderline essential reading to understand this, this one point. chapter that leads you to Dark Crisis, which makes no attempt to contextualize or reference multiversity in any way, shape, or form. Uh. The point of it is, Joshua Williamson was like, hey DC, everyone's talking about multiverses. Spider-Man, <laughs> the solo superhero, is eating our lunch with multiverses, and we invented it. <laughs> Right, crisis and in the earths, the death of the multiverse. The DC multiverse is the thing that got people to understand what multiverses were in 1986, or before that, with the the crisis on two earths with Barry Allen and Jay Garrick. And yet, Marvel was doing it, Spider Man's doing it, and DC's just like do 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 do. So Williams is like, let's do it. Let's go all in on multiverses. And so that's what Dark Crisis is kind of there to reconcile. Now, of course, Jeff Johns has a lot of opinions about multiverses, particularly restoring or preserving the ones that feature worlds that he cares about a lot. Uh, <laughs> you don't so, say. <laughs> so, you know, he did that with Infinite Crisis. There's probably 52 Elseworlds Batman characters, you know? <laughs> I mean, if the dark multiverse is any indication, and go, oh my God, what about the dark multiverse? <laughs> You know, Scott Snyder created a whole other multiverse. Uh, that's uh, negative 52. Well, can't you just put that's some true. of them in there? Anyone that's not like completely happy, you could just say, oh, well, that was the dark multiverse. They, they, there could be a million of those. See, They're not limited to 52. I, I know a lot of people that are not happy now <laughs> yeah. in our own world that can <laughs> well, easily fit over I mean, there. the crime syndicate. Ain't that the dark multiverse? Right. Oh, no, no, no. It, no? But it's the exact opposite of good. Yeah. I feel like that's what the dark multiverse is. Yeah, no, but like, I don't want to tie that to what Scott created. Well, right. I don't want to tie it and say that like, well, it shouldn't exist. Right. Because I make money off of it. If I make money off of it, it yeah. should absolutely Well, at the very least, I invented it here's or the I, thing. I, I popularized it and I want to have my influence. I want to keep it. Yeah, and, and the dark multiverse is like new and not really real. Yeah. <laughs> it certainly isn't firmly established. And yeah. It, it, the, the readers So anything don't... I like, like and cherish, I don't want it to be mixed up in that. Yeah. Well, especially because all these folks like remember when the comic book industry was just creating shit and some of it kept and, and most and a lot of, of it didn't. didn't. Yeah. And so they're like, I don't want to be part of the ultraverse. Like I don't want to be part of a world that gets a lot of effort, time and ink and then in five years doesn't exist or is never relevant again. Yeah. So, you know, I don't want to like, tie myself to the dark multiverse because what if it doesn't work? I'm sorry, but Fair. right now that's what's going on. Yeah. You right. can either disassociate with it and try and do something else, yeah. or you can put a little bit of your influence on it. Right, play play ball. Well, yeah. Also, like, why don't things like the Dark Multiverse work? Right. Because no one wants to connect their stuff to yes. it, and therefore it doesn't work. Exactly. Right? It's a self-fulfilling prophecy. I, I, I feel like there's too many islands in the comic book industry. Yeah. Not just in terms of what the publishers are, but the creators themselves. Yeah. And it's because the publishers don't do their jobs. It's because DC and Marvel, both of you, don't do the work. And they rely on their creatives to be their own brands, right? Yep. You need to be a brand, Scott Snyder. You need to be a brand, Joshua Williamson. You need to be a brand, everybody. And so as a result, you're forcing them to be islands, to be brands that produce things, they're production companies that are named after themselves, <laughs> and if they work for a publisher that creates an ongoing contiguous universe, they're going to reflect that mentality. Joshua Williamson loves the DC Universe and he wants to influence it in a positive way, and I think that's a big part in why this book is so interconnected and interwoven. Mm -hmm. I think it's also a little too beholden to Grant Morrison, because Grant Morrison 
is great, but also <laughs> is a cog in the machine. There are many great creators. Right. Why aren't there any Len Wein boosters out there? I mean, there are, but they're fans that are creators <laughs> who are dedicating the entire whole line-wide events to what Len Wein did. Mm -hmm. Or maybe a little bit, but not enough to create three act structures that lead to crises. <laughs> uh, but why? He created Wolverine. This is this was this come out as one book or no. is this like multiple? It books? was a it was a mini series called Justice League Incarnate. Okay. Okay. So, so it was it like spanned multiple titles. It's like, yes. it like four books maybe. So the only thing you need to know. Yeah, is that at the end of Infinite Frontier, the multiverse got cracked uh -huh. because Darkseid put Barry Allen on the machine that ended up cracking the multiverse, oh, yeah. and it created this big crack in the in the sky yeah, that looks like a Zeus's thunderbolt. You're right, yeah. and now we gotta chase the crack. <laughs> Everybody's gotta go find that crack. Where that crack? We got a big crack problem. Yeah, in the DC there's a massive crack problem in the DC universe. <laughs> DC universe is showing its crack. And the Justice League Incarnate is addicted wait, to crack. Wait, wait, which? There's so which many different jokes crack to make. Oh, no, what are we I'm, going for? I'm, it's, it's, our cup runneth over on back issues. <laughs> Thank you for naming it the crack. There's too many options here. Barry Allen's missing, and he was taken off the table essentially by being shoved onto the Justice League Incarnate and being a multiversal character, because of course he is, and Jeff Johns had He's his like reign. the only one. <laughs> right, well, yes, yes, he is. But then they created more. But Barry Allen had his time, and then Josh wrapped up his run, and then they were like, all right, uh, Wally's taking over again because Rebirth happened and we fixed Wally, or at the very least we brought Wally back and allowed him to be relevant again. So Wally's gonna take over the Flashbook so Barry can go over here and be on this other team. And if anybody wants to write about it, knock yourselves out. Oh, I, I guess I will. And so they did. And so Barry, uh, he got kidnapped and then put into a machine and then Darkseid used him and then this big explosion happened and uh, oh, don't forget uh, Psycho Pirate was there and he was the Omega Pirate. Don't really worry about that. He's not really oh, in this. Yeah, it doesn't worry. He's not really in here anymore. The Omega Pirate was also going throughout the multiverse and making deals with other worlds within the 52 essentially to screw over Earth Zero because Earth Zero is always the fulcrum of a multiversal event, right. and so it's like, please don't do that anymore, or at the very least, can we destroy them so they won't? That happened, it failed, Darkseid is, Barry's gone, and there's a crack in the multiverse. So the Just League Incarnate, or rather the Justice Incarnate, needs to get involved. Right. And what you need to know about the Justice Incarnate, or Justice League Incarnate, is that they're made up of a bunch of multiversal characters who were all introduced, or at the very least formed as a team in multiversity, that dwells in a floating, interdimensional, intermultiversal ship slash base called the House of Heroes, which is monitored by an AI version of Harbinger, who was actually a character in Christ of the Earths. But right now she's just an AI representation of that character. And she's kind of like the Jarvis of the House of Heroes. Mm -hmm. And uh, so the Justice League Incarnate, who are they? What are they all about? Well, they are essentially led by Calvin Ellis, AKA President Superman, invented by Grant Morrison during Final Crisis, one of the multiversal Supermen. And uh, yes, he's there because of President Barack Obama. <laughs> and uh, that's the idea, is that there's a President Superman. It's what if Superman became President Calvin Ellis. And he's there. We've also got a number of other characters, including Aqua Woman. And Aqua Woman is from an Earth where the genders are flipped. So there's a Batwoman, and that's Kathy Kane, and other characters like that. Where it's just if if it was a boy, it's a girl. If it's a girl, it's a boy, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But uh, that's a character on the team. There's also another guy named Dino Cop, who is obviously Savage Dragon. <laughs> no, that's no, awesome. he's not. He, yeah. The only thing is, he ain't green. And I'm like, why not? Why not make him green? Yeah. I mean, Savage Go Dragon on. is an obvious rip off of the Hulk. Oh Why God. not just make him green? That is Savage. That's just Savage Dragon. Yeah. Holy crap. And they're like, whoa, 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 he's not a dragon. He's a dinosaur. It's totally different. <laughs> and and he's weird better he because still dinosaurs has that are top real. Mohawk yeah. frill. Right? Yeah. That's a fin. That's it. No. Savage <laughs> Dragon and Finn, that's a frill. Because dragons have frills. So, yeah. What? <laughs> And also, there is another character who was invented for this book, and everyone acts like she's always been there the whole time, and I'm like, no, and that's Dr. Multiverse. That's this character. That's correct. And Dr. Multiverse's job is, you know, she monitors the multiverse or whatever. She was also invented like in- the Wow. E no. No. It's more like she's a member of the Avengers, but she's too powerful and too multiversal, so she never really sticks around. Okay. The Avengers? 
Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. I mean the Retaliators. Yes, the and, Earth uh, Eight uh, team. Yes, Earth Eights, Marvel Universe, the Retaliators, who are just the Avengers. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we meet up with the Retaliators, and they're hanging out on Earth Eight, and they're licking their wounds. A member of the Retaliators who was from Earth Eight was the Iron Man ripoff, and he also betrayed. Earth Zero to the Omega Pirate, and he died, and his head popped off, <laughs> and Dr. Multiverse found it, and so the Retaliators are bitching about where their Iron Man character is, and Dr. Multiverse shows up, and she's like, yeah, he's dead. He was a dick. Mm -hmm. And they're like, ooh, because they're all Marvel characters, so they're all quick to anger. Right. Which is so unlike anyone else in the DC universe. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, no one, no, no one in DC <laughs> has a temper. <laughs> yeah, no. No time for that, because suddenly... <laughs> Thanos attacks. That, I, I mean, mean Tartarus! <laughs> I what? He yeah. says at Why last. Why are the Autobots rolling out? Well, yeah, right? they're just they're, they're just, just his, minions. They're his minions. Yeah. Yes, the Eternity Conquest begins. <laughs> yeah, 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 all right. Yeah. And there's a lot of different jokes and references about Thanos. So in Multiversity, they make reference to the Retaliators as well. And uh, when characters refer or try to explain to the Justice Incarnate who they are, one of the remarks, "Yeah, I've seen the movies. <laughs> I'm aware okay. of those characters." Um. Isn't there another Avengers yes. team in another like Marvel ripoff universe? Yes, there is. There's actually okay. multiples, and in fact, <laughs> this isn't the only retaliators in the DC multiverse. <laughs> oh my god! But we're gonna focus on these guys. Uh, okay. So that's, yeah. that's because like probably multiple people want to make, make fun the of joke, but they don't want to in invoke the continuity of the previous person who made fun of Marvel. Yeah. This is a, this is a different version. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, so. there hadn't been Wikipedia yet, so they were like, oh my god, how am I even going to keep it straight? Right. I gotta find somebody who remembers. Well, and I don't want to, like, use their characters. I want to make up my own! Made up alter ego characters. I want to do that. Yes. <laughs> Thanks. Great. Now it's confusing. Yeah. So okay. Tartarus attacks, and it's like just a big, stupid Marvel event where Thanos is coming, and everyone, the, the retaliators have to get involved, and so they battle him. But Tartarus isn't just like there for no reason. This whole book is about getting the crack. The crack is on Earth 8. So Tartarus oh. senses the energy from the crack, and he's like, I gotta get the crack. He doesn't even know he wants the crack. Oh, so he's not is even the crack from Earth 8. No, he is from Earth 8. Oh. It's just that it's the Thanos of this not Marvel universe, and so right. he oh, senses this thing power. And I want it. Exactly. I see. Does the crack move around, or is it only on Earth 8? It moves around. Well, okay, so it appears and then transposes to Earth 8, but with the right incentive, it can go to different Earths within the DC multiverse. <laughs> Which, of course, it will. Right, so we need we to can, go to these places. Yeah, we got to see these other. Places. Otherwise, like, why would we even have Doctor Multiverse? Yeah, that's right. What am I? What's our? What's our? Yeah, <laughs> uh, we also need to meet Avery Ho. Avery Ho is Flash of the main DC universe, but she's the Chinese Flash. They created a whole bunch of different Chinese versions of the Justice League. Avery Ho is one of them. Oh, she's yeah, the Chinese when? Flash. When did that happen? Oh, years ago, during oh. Rebirth. Oh, okay. I remember that. I didn't know yeah, that. there's a Ken and Kong. He's the Chinese Superman, also a Chinese Batman, etc. But uh, Avery and Ho. They're just in the. Yeah, they just they just zip universe. around. Yeah, people don't want to write about him anymore. You know, because they tried to capitalize on China and it didn't work out, so they were like, oh, okay, well then they can go away. <laughs> they can go over there. Yeah, and then every well, it's time a huge market. There's like a. World... We should write stories for them. That's, right. That's exactly what happened, and and China didn't respond, and so they were like, oh, okay, well then fuck them. Oh well, never mind. <laughs> Yeah, but it's like, but those characters exist now, and every time there's like a world-spanning event, I'm gonna be like, yeah, where is the Chinese up? Superman? Yeah, like, okay, so in Action Comics, there are a bunch of Supermen that exist in the DC Universe, and so uh, let's put them all on one team. Because that won't be OP. <laughs> and uh, Kenan's one of them. Because there's a Chinese Superman, so here right, he is now. So he's gotta be there. But Avery Ho is a Chinese Flash, and nobody's using her, so here she is now. Calvin Ellis, Superman, and... Thomas Wayne Batman show up because they're friends and they became pals in Infinite Frontier. Mm -hmm. And they're like, hey, we need a Flash. And it would be, we'd prefer a Flash from Earth Zero because we're looking for Barry Allen. Our Barry Allen's missing. We had this big adventure and we need Flashes in order to travel through the multiverse, even though we don't because we have the House of Heroes, but whatever. And uh, <laughs> we, all we know is we need Flashes. Not all of them, we just need... It's got something to do with Flash, well, we need a Flash. We need a Flash, a flash. to get a Flash, and we don't want to use any other Flashes because they're either busy or we really want to prop up Avery, so here she is. Right. And she's also newish, and so she's unsure of herself, and she's like, all right, I'm in. <laughs> Hey, we're a team of like non mainline heroes. Yes. You are a non mainline Flash. Yeah. Why don't you join and us? And you're from the real one. Yeah. So you're. But you're close. You're close. You're not Barry Allen or Wally West yeah. from Earth Zero, but or you Max are Mercury from Earth Or Max Mercury or Bart Allen. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're one of those. Oh, but you're like Marathon. number like eight down the list of like genuine flashes. Literally the bottom of the barrel. But I mean, but you know, you're here, and it'd be fun because like nobody really defined you, so now we can. Right now you're you're a blank slate. Yes, yes. I, the only or problem so. is I won't get any residuals if they make a movie about you. Mm. But they will use my influence on you if they do, and that might be enough. I'm not right. accusing Culver and Williamson <laughs> of doing that for that reason. Sure. I'm just saying it's a happy coincidence. Right. So Superman and Batman, of course, it's like it's it's Flashpoint Batman. He has not had Flashpoint Beyond yet, where his whole world is in a snow globe. Oh yeah. <laughs> but it's actually before this. Okay. But why does it say he's from Earth Unknown? Because they don't. Be okay. Because the Flashpoint universe isn't really a universe. It's a timeline. Oh, I see. But he's here now. Actually, he was here because remember it's, he was in the Tom King run, yeah, and he helped Bane and stuff. And, okay, uh, but isn't it like Earth Zero, but just an alternate version of Earth Zero or something? Yeah, but that's hyper time. He's yeah, like, but didn't it? Well, make okay. it own, its own multiverse then. Yeah, well, it's from another Earth because when they erased the timeline, technically Thomas should have died. But then after the button, they were like, "But he didn't, and his Earth still existed. So right. what's that all about?" Right. And it's like, "Well, it's another universe, and they don't know what universe it is because they don't know." Where, they don't know how to even explain and that. And it's not an, it's not one of the fifty two, <laughs> right. so it's not a universe. So what is it? And then it's like, oh, it's actually a snow globe or something. Right. And just ask Johns. He'll it's know. Like a pocket universe. Or He'll something. tell you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And so that's where he's from, but they don't know that, or they do know that that's the plan, and so they're saying universe unknown. Yeah, they're trying yeah. to like keep it secret. Yeah. So Flashpoint Batman and President Superman are the multiverse's finest, ha ha ha. Or at least someone will refer to that. And so they're like, let's go get Avery slash Flash. Come on, join the team. And she's like, okie dokie. So they go to the House of Heroes, meet our team. One of them's Thunderer. Don't worry about him. Uh -huh. uh, Thunderer's from another Earth that's kind of marvel -y and it's destroyed. Uh, that happened in Multiversity. Uh, his whole planet was destroyed by a race of monsters called the Gentry who were led by an evil entity called the Empty Hand. And they're all mean something and they represent stuff about the comic book industry and don't worry about it. <laughs> so that's Earth 7. they will show up later, but all you need to know is there's an evil race of monsters called the Gentry. They're led by the Empty Hand, who's a big evil bad guy. And they won, I guess. They destroyed Thunderer's Earth, Earth 7. And, but he survived. Uh, but Thunderer survived. Okay. Is the Empty Hand the other hand of the free market? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think you'd have to be, right? And <laughs> Dino Cop, who is from Earth 41, which is essentially the interconnected image universe from the beginning of Image. But <laughs> okay. we can't use any of them right. except for all the Wildcats characters. So there, that Earth has a Spawn ripoff and a Savage Dragon ripoff and presumably there's a Max somewhere. But also all the Wildstorm characters can totally be there because they're <laughs> from there and we own them. Oh my God. So of course there will be an opportunity for them to go to Earth 41. And there will be a big splash page that will it feature Wildcats! That will have Wildcats in it and they will team up with a ripoff not Youngblood team <laughs> that is definitely the Youngblood. Oh, okay. And I wish they'd gotten someone to draw that like Rob Liefeld, but they didn't. And they do fight a Violator slash Mobulja character. <laughs> yes. Anyway, so the uh, so, so Avery gets brought into the team. She bumps into Dino Cop, and they give her the lowdown about what's been going on with Infinite Frontier. And they're like, we gotta look for Barry Allen. Pretty simple pl premise. Yeah, really find Barry down. Allen. A bunch of multiversal heroes are looking for Barry Allen, because he's the key to all this. I'm in. Right. I mean, yes. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Despite all that. But where are they going? Minutes, how like, do they know you, that... They have to traverse the multiverse, and so that's what we're going to get this, this Flash character. Because she's just, from... Yeah. Well, okay, she's from Earth Zero. Same as Barry Allen. Yeah. So she so knows Barry like a, Allen, like and she a, can... She'd know where he would go. She'd like go to the bars that he. Does she know like no. the, <laughs> well, the cosmic flash yes. signature yes. that he has? She'll think of Barry Allen, run, and then essentially like She'll just show up where he is. Yes, or at least that's the plan. I see. Okay. Right. That's pretty. That dicey. makes as much sense as any other flash plan. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Right? It's like, yeah, all right. Yep. So they have their own cosmic treadmill they call the quantum treadmill. They make Avery run on it and, uh, well, thinking about Barry Allen really, really hard. And uh, so instead of going to Barry Allen, they end up on Earth 8 hmm. with uh, the, the Retaliators. So there is some connection between Barry Allen and... and like, well, I guess because the crack is there and the that's connected to Barry uh -huh. Allen. Yeah, yeah, that's okay. right, that's right, okay. yeah. Because Barry's on the other side of the crack, presumably. Right. So they end up there, the Retaliators like, Boo! We hate you! <laughs> Our place is wrecked. Tartarus is here, messing things up. 
Yep. And, and we, so we know somehow you're involved. And we know it's your fault somehow. We hate you guys. Go away. <laughs> Fair. Right. I mean, like, it, it's hard to deny. Yeah. And Avery's like, I don't even know your names. I don't, I've never even heard of you. Right. <laughs> so Tartarus is just about done killing all the retaliators. Oh, no. We hardly knew ye. Uh-huh. When Tartarus goes to get Dr. Multiverse, because Dr. Multiverse is technically from here. Okay. And so he's like, oh, you got something I need. Like you, I know you, you, Dr. Multiverse. Yeah, I'm aware of you. And also, I know that, like, because you also traverse the multiverse and you're connected to the power I'm seeking, I know to shake you down next until a grandfather box opens up. New invention. <laughs> Don't ask what makes it different from a mother box. Essentially, just more powerful. It's a oh, mother box, but more. Uh, okay, so, like, the mother box... Okay. Mother boxes can't traverse the multiverse. Oh. Grandfather boxes presumably can. I see. And there's only one. So, Darkseid walks Not even a grandmother box. I know, right? Yeah. I, I guess because Darkseid is a misogynist. <laughs> so, as were, were they mother, mother boxes. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> so, Darkseid emerges, and of course, if you read Infinite Frontier, you'd know that this is not some horseshit Darkseid. In fact, there aren't any more. All the dark sides everywhere have been merged into the one true dark side. And all the other dark sides, especially the Jeff Johns one from the New 52, who sucked, <laughs> uh, they're all aspects of dark side that were broken up throughout the multiverse and they've now been coalesced into one and he killed that's why the they quintessence. Were, that's why they were able to be beaten. Yes. That's, yes. Uh, there were aspects that's of why me. They, they were all me. Right. That's right, also they were why doom bots. they sucked. Yeah, they were doom bots. <laughs> they were dark side bots. <laughs> they were just fate or Thanos clones. Yeah. They were all the res excuses you need. And, you know, because, of course, like, they've established, like, Darkseid's a... So, it's outside. Yeah, he, he doesn't... He's he, not part of the Why would there be multiple versions of Darkseid? And they're like, yeah. oh. Uh, okay. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, uh, yeah. Um. Well, so now there isn't... And now it's just one Darkseid. And he's just like the Darkseid that For everybody now. likes. For now. Oh, yeah. Until someone tells an Elseworlds story where they want Darkseid. Well, yeah, and they're like, actually, actually, my Darkseid is the true Darkseid. The one true Darkseid was a clone made by the Great Darkness or something. <laughs> no, no, that was the coalescence of all Darksides in that area. But this is like a different thing. Yeah. Yeah. This yeah. is like this is like the idea of Darkseid, which is even more potent. <laughs> so Darkseid fights Thanos because you want to see that. Right. And they never really did it. Except it's not Thanos. Nope, it's Tartarus. It's discount and it's like, Thanos. That sucks. And it's like, I know. I know what you want to do, and I know they wouldn't let you. Right. And I know that the book is supposed to be like, you know, you're having fun, making fun of Marvel. <laughs> so I guess But also, Thanos is really big right now. We'd like to capitalize on that. I mean, they're all thinking about him. And also, you know, we're thinking, well, the multiverses are all being talked about because of the movies, and Thanos is the big bad of the movies, so right. here he is. And of course, we're gonna make references to it. Like for example, of course, the big thing we all know about movie Thanos is the snap, right? Yeah. So of course, Darkseid snaps his neck. <laughs> and is that the same? Maybe that's a joke about Man of Steel too. I was gonna say, that reminds me more of Man of Steel. Right? I was like, by snapping his neck, does something happen in the universe? Right, no, he just dies. <laughs> uh, but that's before. Of course, we also get a very big tongue-in-cheek self-referential fight. Tartarus, he whips up the eight rings of the ancient spectrum. Yeah, DC universe, but they're rings, and they all have different colors, so they look kind of like Infinity Gems to me. Right. So he wields them, and you're like, oh! <laughs> and of course, he also, you know, Darkseid has his old Darkseid is, so Tartarus says, I am inevitable. Oh, ho, ho. oh, Get it? That's what he said in the movie. Yeah. And the, the rest of the team is like, this isn't Barry Allen. Like, we're not even supposed to be. <laughs> this doesn't have anything to do with what I was trying to yeah. accomplish. And uh, so, of course, Dr. Multiverse gets rescued by President Superman. And she, like, sees all the aspects of Superman through him. And, of course, she also has got Gaga eyes for him because he's so attractive and fun and great and pious. Sure. And uh, so, you know, they, uh, so, so they're like, so the whole of Justice League Incarnate is all just standing over there while Thanos <laughs> and Darkseid fight. And they're like, so what do you think we should do? Like, where do you think we should go? Like, I mean, we, this wasn't where we needed to be. But why are we pulled here in the first place? And so they're like, well, eventually we need to come up with a plan because they're going to stop fighting. Right. And then and we're going to have to leave. And to that's deal what with happens a lot left. in this book. We're like, they're like, something's happening over there. And when that's done, we're going to have to have a plan. And I'm like, why are you doing that? I'm like, oh, right, because this would be like five issues. So they're like, all right, well, Dr. Multiverse offers to open up like a portal using her Dr. Multiverse powers, which are, of course, varied and numerous because she was invented for this book. Well, how come we're no longer using the quantum treadmill to we travel? We only needed it to get there because we thought it was going to bring us yeah, to Yeah, but Barry now Allen. we're deciding to go somewhere else, but we're using a different means of getting there? Yes. 
Yeah, that's well, why the, Dr. The, the, Multiverse is there. That's right, because the treadmill's back on the House of Heroes. Oh, I see. Which exists within the bleed. Right. Whereas the bleed is a inside comic book reference to like, you know, where the page bleeds so how, over for printing. But also it's that multiversal area of space that the Authority traveled in in their spaceship that then DC adopted after Wildstorm's acquisition. Right, but, but if they're just gonna use Dr. Multiverse's portal, yeah. what was their plan gonna be for leaving? I assume they were gonna make Flash run. Okay. And they're like, well, you don't have to run. You can take a break. Yeah. There's Dr. Multiverse. Well, actually, she can't because they are still looking for Barry. So while Dr. Multiverse opens a portal, she forces Flash or Avery, because she doesn't want to be called Flash yet. She will at the end of the book. Avery is unsure of herself, and Dr. Multiverse convinces her to go. Mm. So they do. You know, just, just believe in yourself. You have more power than you believe. You right. Know. This time it'll work. This time you'll find your Flash. Yes. <laughs> and they don't. Spoilers. <laughs> Right. Damn it, Avery! <laughs> Meanwhile, in the House of Heroes, uh, they're, you know, characters we don't want to deal with, like Thunderer and Mary Marvel and Dino Cop and Aqua Woman <laughs> are all hanging out. And uh, then Orion appears, and it's like the real Orion, I guess. You know? Oh. Because he's outside of multiverse or. Oh, yeah, he Because opens. real Orion would do this. But anyway, o Orion shows up and he's like, hey! I'm taking over the House of Heroes now. And they're like, who are you and what army? He's like, Darkseid emptied Apocalypse and sent it here to the Bleed to kill the House of Heroes because you guys are in the way of his ultimate goal, which is, of course, getting that crack. <laughs> Hashtag get that crack. <laughs> okay. So that's the plan, right? Darkseid is chasing the crack. The Justice League incarnate, it's not what they're called yet, but they will be, so I'm calling them that, and the book is called that, are looking for Barry Allen, but they find out that there's this crack that Darkseid is seeking, so now they're like, we gotta keep Darkseid from getting the crack because this crack is also like a thing you could touch and also it has power and if Darkseid gets that power, he might be so powerful that it'll wreck everything. <laughs> so it's another... Uh, Layer. Well, no, it's another version of the, uh, the thing he's always trying to get. The, the anti-life equation. The anti-life equation. Oh yeah, that's horseshit. Yeah, forget that. The crack. Now oh, it's all so about much that better. Crack. All about that crack. I thought you were going to say, they're trying to stop him because crack is whack. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they are, and it is. So, oh, yeah. Man. I mean, you know. So, you said it instead. So, I'm picturing the crag as like a thing in the sky. And you're saying, no, it's more like a little thing you can Okay, it is both to. of those things. Oh, okay. Like, it, it looks like Zeus's lightning bolt. Okay. Right? It looks like a jagged lightning bolt. Is it like bolt. a rainbow where, like, the closer you get to it, the more it receives? Like, you can't just fly to no, it. No, no, you can't. You definitely can. Oh. And it physically appears in space. It's well, not like it's why, a crack in the why sky. Why is it so hard to get to it? Can't they see? just see it and go? It should be everywhere. Yeah. Well, yeah. okay. It's not, though. It's <laughs> only in different places at one time. Like, it's in one multiverse. It's The crack only exists on one Earth at a time. At a time. Right. Right. You know, and it, you have to try and follow it around. You never know where it's going to be. Well, <laughs> no. They were able to find it when they eventually did discover it, and Dr. Multiverse has the power to possess slash move the crack. Okay, mm. I don't mean to say that she does have the power to possess the crack because she thinks she does, but she doesn't. Ah, that's I a big see. reveal at the end. Ah, but see. right now, they know they need to move the crack away from Darkseid. Like, ah, Darkseid okay. came to Earth-7 to get that crack. <laughs> so they're like, crap, we need to move it. So right. they use their powers, Multiverse mostly uses their powers, uh, but they send it away. You gotta get that crack okay. off track. Gotta get that crack off track. So they send the crack away, and then Dr. Multiverse uses her powers to open a portal to send the Justice League Incarnate to wherever the crack ended up. I see. Then they're gonna go get that crack, and then hopefully either use it, turn it off, fix it, or whatever. Right, we'll figure they, it out when we well, get there. They don't want to seal it because they want to get on the other side of it because right, they think Barry's there. Right, because we still need there. Barry Allen. Gotta get Barry. Why? Why do you need Barry Allen? He's a good Let guy. Go. We like him a lot. It's really that. It's just, Barry's a good guy. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta save out. Barry. We gotta save Barry. His book is about saving Barry. It's a rescue mission. You visit the whole universe at stake? I feel like. Yes. You Maybe just sacrifice need to cut Barry. your losses. Yeah. Uh, this they, one guy. They do how many up, billions of people have died in the first 10 billions. pages of this fucking book? But yes, they should do that. And they do ultimately come to that conclusion at the end. Oh, after many billions more die, no certainly. doubt. <laughs> no, no, it's, it's okay. not nearly that big of a Okay, because a whole bunch of people already died. I know. Just in the first... Well, mostly it was just retaliators, but yes. Well, I'm sure there was collateral damage. No doubt, the it's city. a horrible book. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, uh, the the Just League Incarnate end up on Earth-13. Do they all retaliators converge? Yes. Before they die, because yeah. they did die, so they're not saying anything now. Some of them die, not all oh. of them. Yeah, the Captain America character dies, and the other one's like, Get out of here! Just leave! Okay? Haven't you done enough? <laughs> they say retaliators <laughs> rampage. 
Because it's got to be alliterative. It's got to be alliterative, and it also has to be a dig. Yeah. You know, it's like these characters, they rampage all over the page. They rampage throughout your comic book stores. <laughs> they rampage to the box office. They rampage on all of our potential sales. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the Just League card end up on Earth-13. Earth-13 is essentially... Like a spooky world. Yeah. Yeah, it's this is great. <laughs> it is, it is, okay. Meta, it is where they shoved all the Vertigo characters when they canceled the books. Like, when they canceled the line. Oh. Huh. They're like, this is where all the Vertigo characters are. They go to this, like, special... So they go to this special, like, bar within a mausoleum in a graveyard, and the password is Vertigo backwards. Huh. So they end up there, and they are met by the Hellblazer, who is... John Constantine's superhero analog was created by Grant Morrison in a Doom Patrol book years and years and years ago. And so, you know, John Constantine, it's just, it's just relics from Vertigo slash DC when Josh and Dennis remembered it. <laughs> and so it's just a fun little who's who of Vertigo slash what? You know, like there's a demon that was summoned in a Green Arrow book from Kevin Smith that appears in here because that's a Vertigo reference from Sandman that Smith was making back then when Dr. Fate got so old and busted that they needed to revamp him and make him look like a Minch character and they called him Fate. He's here too. Like, it's just relics of a bygone era. I'm shocked Azrael Batman isn't here. But <laughs> he's, he's not interesting enough to exist in the Tavern of Mystery. Is this just... Who, what author is this? This is Joshua Williamson Joshua. and Dennis Culver working together. Okay, is this Williamson and Culver just being like, let's think of all the references we can make. Yes, this book is references the event, absolutely. <laughs> like there's a there's a version of Etrigan that's also Superman. It's from an Elseworlds book. It's like, <laughs> ah, there they all are. It's cool. every new multiverse you go, oh, oh. Yes, and some of them are made up and are just jokes, mm -hmm. but others are this. You remember from a time when DC would try stuff. Clearly there's sparks between Dr. Multiverse and President Superman, and he's single, and so, you know, Calvin... And he's also the president, I mean, come on. I know, but if his Earth, I mean, it's not like you're president of the universe. It's still a multiverse. power move. President... president he's president of one country on his Earth, right? Yeah, that's yeah. nothing. It's like being president of the gas station. Congratulations. Uh, yeah, no, I mean, president multiverse sounds better. Uh, but anyway, so... I mean, if they get married. Right, yeah. <laughs> Maybe he could be president of the multiverse. I agree. Maybe he could be true. first doctor She'd be like, I'm multiverse. Dr. Multiverse. I'm the one that gets to be in charge. Yeah, I didn't spend seven years in multiversal <laughs> medical school to, to take your name, jackass. Anyway, uh, oh, so sparks are flying, kind of, or at least there's some sexual there's tension. Some implied yeah, sparkage. It's very implied. And uh, Thomas, you know, Thomas, Flashpoint, Batman, who's been through a lot, mm -hmm. he went from being like, my son was killed in an alley and I'm mad. Oh, my wife's Joker. And that too. then he got dropped into the main DC universe and he's like, I'm so mad. Maybe I'll team up with Bane and screw my son over so that he quits being Batman. Nope. Okay, well, I guess I'm here now. Also, you want maybe your son? I also, maybe I was in Convergence? If you want your son to stop being Batman, <laughs> just be Thomas Wayne, his father. Yeah. He'll yep. stop. I know. Thomas, yeah, yep. but Tom King was like, that's not sad enough. It doesn't have to be sad. <laughs> yes, it does. Why? Because can't? I'm an island and my brand is sad. <laughs> Why can't we just let Thomas Wayne from Flashpoint die? <laughs> Because Why does he have to stick around? No one else stuck around. Look at his costume. Point. He's a brand. Because he's know, too he, cool. He makes it complicated, though. I know. Well, he made it complicated when you brought him to the real world. Right, though. yes. It was fun in Convergence when Batman met him. Yeah. Yes. And said, you have a grandson. It was weird when <laughs> he went, when Batman and Barry went to the Flashpoint world and Flashpoint Batman said, stop being Batman. It was terrible <laughs> when Flashpoint Batman came to the main reality and then became a bad guy. Yeah. And then it's less weird and bad for him to be a multiversal Batman because we need a Batman. Right. And it ain't gonna be Batman Gotham by Gaslight <laughs> or Vampire Batman. Because Vampire <laughs> Batman keeps trying to bite President Superman. Okay. It's fun. It makes sense. For him to be on this team. Yes. I, a I multiversal do agree. team of superheroes. Especially because you, you need to get rid of him. Yeah. Get him out of... Get him away from real Batman. He can't be interacting with real Batman. It's weird. It's already weird because he always has now. Yes. That sucks. 
Like yeah. you've already, it's like, no, no, but he went away. But you already did it. Yeah, you didn't <laughs> undo it. Right. Right. Yeah, you didn't say that he was like the ventriloquist and he made a Batman dummy. Or he or was like he possessed was by psycho pirate. <laughs> yeah. Could have been anything. Right. right. Yeah. Oh, no, no, no. It was never your dad. I created your dad out of right. multiversal energy. Right. No, and he went this nuts is... because I don't really know anything about you. No, this is your dad. This is what would have happened to him. <laughs> the real one. Yeah. Except he's not. That's the worst. It's like real Batman should have been like, I don't give a shit what you think. You're Fake not my dad. dad. Yeah. My dad is bones under the ground. <laughs> yeah. He's You're like, some lunatic from a, another reality. There's a never ending supply of you multiversal yeah. people who th think that you're the real one right. and I, you're not. I know how to beat you. I'll go in the multiverse and get another version of you that tells you you're a jerk off. <laughs> Me and my cooler dad can go get ice cream. Right. Or I'll kill you because it doesn't count. Because Batman yep. becomes Rick Sanchez when he gets exposed <laughs> to the multiverse. Right? Who wouldn't? Right. Who wouldn't in the real world? Like, Williamson attempts to make that kind of a thing in Infinite Frontier, where it's like the multiverse has been like revealed to everyone. Mm -hmm. Like people are like, wait, so there's other versions of me? Now they don't think there's an infinite amount. Right. They know there's at least there's... a finite number. Right. And it's 52, even though there isn't. It's a little whatever. easier to handle, but. Right. Yeah. But wouldn't there be people going like, it doesn't matter, God's a lie, blam, 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 blam. <laughs> like, see you in Earth 62. <laughs> like, right. Yes. Yes. That would definitely be People would lose their insane. minds. Yeah. I mean, yeah. people were upset, but they weren't psychotic. And I'm like, no, you got to go there. Yeah. If you're going to introduce that concept. But then again, you know, like, I can fix Clown Hunter for you now. Because Clown Hunter sucks. Mm -hmm. Clown Hunter. James Tynan, the fourth character. Yep. He's a little boy from the crappy part of Gotham, which is like saying that it's like, <laughs> oh, he's from the hot part of Orlando. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's upset because his parents were killed by clowns that worked for the Joker. Mm -hmm. So he's like, I'm going to kill clowns now. And I'm like, that sucks. <laughs> yeah, you and everybody else, kid. Right. First of all, your name is terrible. Secondly, your whole shtick is weak. You only kill clown. You only kill Joker henchmen. It's like no, I'll expand. But no, no, I'll kill all clowns. Uh, Birthday clowns, <laughs> circus clowns. Yeah, now you're a villain. You're not an anti-hero. You're not fun. You're not interesting. <laughs> no, clown under his fucking mind snaps. That's what to do. You expose him in the multiverse, and he's like, so there's a version of me where my parents are alive. There's a version of me where I'm a girl. There's a version of me where my parents never had me and had their dreams realized. There's, there's a, a version of me where the giant batarang. <laughs> oh, that the, the bat I use with a batarang embedded in it, yeah? It's just a bat with an actual live bat taped to the top. Right, there's a version of me where I have a bat with kryptonite embedded in it or something. <laughs> like, There's a version of me where I'm underwater, everything's the same, but I'm underwater. Right. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a Lex hunter now, I am a Black Manta hunter now. I'm a like, Bugs Bunny character yeah. in this one. Yeah, right, I'm Captain Carrot's sidekick. <laughs> I, I, I hunt riddles now. Right, yeah, I'm question hunter. Endless opportunities if you want to play with the multiverse. Yeah. But let's look at these vertical characters. <laughs> so anyway, Thomas Wayne is like, hey, Cal. You, you see her? You want to hit it? Huh. Like, I'm busy, man. Come on. Like, this is when you show your personality? Yeah, is I'm this what you like? Trying to hook me up? <laughs> this is a bar. There's got to be a back room somewhere. That's what he's saying. He's like, dude. And he's like, we got to save the multiverse. He goes, when are you not trying to save the multiverse? Let me just ask you that. Like, you got to jerk off. You know, you don't go like I don't jerk off because I gotta save the multiverse. So it's like okay, in lieu of that, I'm you president. Can just have Superman. a girlfriend. I right. have people that do that for me. Yikes! This is Thomas Wayne's character now. Yeah, this is just like a <laughs> he's bro. wingman for yeah. fucking President Superman. <laughs> like, oh, he's Batman. Yeah. Oh. And so essentially, he's like, come on, you know, in this bar of insanity. Right. Like man bats like, rah, rah, rah. he's like, you gotta get laid. <laughs> and it's like, look around us. This is Earth. What? Thirteen? Nothing matters, man. <laughs> You might as hit well it. hit Dr. <laughs> Multiverse. Things are creepy and weird here. Let's get crazy. Yeah. Like, let's all hook. Like, like. <laughs> oh, it's going to be one giant orgy Marcy. <laughs> yeah. So effectively what happens is, you know, uh, it works. You know, Cal's like, all right. You know what? I will. Fair point. I will take my shot. Right. With, with Dr. Multiverse. Anyway, so then they end up uh, doing like a seance. Effectively what happens is they meet who they're there to meet, which is, of course, Hellblazer. 
Constantine if he were a superhero. Mm -hmm. And he gets a whole bunch of other fun characters together, and they do an homage to a JSA cover where like characters are doing a seance, they see another reality. But anyway, uh, the point is they're like, we need, to, we need to save Barry Allen, and we gotta fight Darkseid maybe? For this crack? So we're gonna pull all the heroes in the Tavern of Mystery and ourselves, we're gonna join forces and we're gonna fight Darkseid or something. And he's gonna kill everyone in like five seconds. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Instead what happens is they're all engulfed in infernal flames and they disappear. Okay. And when I say all, I mean only the characters we're following. So Justice League Incarnate uh. gets engulfed in crazy magic flames and they disappear. And in fact, instead of everyone from the Tavern of Mystery joining them, no one from the Tavern of Mystery <laughs> joins them and they can move on. So we go to another reality. <laughs> what, a, what a great plan. <laughs> Yep. We're, just, we're just there to see those characters. Yes. They and don't have any impact. So what else are we going to do? Well, Grant Morrison invented those fun heaven characters. Remember all those angels that were insane? And now one of them joined the Justice League? Let's go there because we haven't referenced it in 25 years. And so they go there. And in fact, Darkseid is already there. And he's fighting Asmodel. And you're like, oh, I remember that. <laughs> and so while Darkseid's fighting Asmodel, they're like, we got to figure out what we're going to do. And so they're like, we got to find that crack. And we got to we gotta move. We got to either get it or we're gonna move it and we can't seal it because remember Barry's behind it and then a boom tube opens up and wouldn't you know it the bat woman who laughs emerges from it and everyone just, what? just sighs and puts their hands over their faces and goes yep no no more people That's who enough. laugh we thought the dark multiverse was done. Scott, don't work here no more. You don't Why have to keep putting this in here. Why does she have a golden gauntlet? Right. She uses that, I guess, to traverse the multiverse because that's what she's doing. Now, which universe does she come from? Right. And they're like, maybe she's... But Dr. Multiverse, one of her many powers is that she can look at people and know... Maybe not necessarily what number they're from, <laughs> but at least she knows that the she's, title. she's about not him. from the Dark Multiverse. She's like, no, that's Kathy Kane from the Aqua Woman Multiverse. So that's the real Batwoman from that reality. And she's been twisted and altered in the main multiverse, which means that these far reaching implications are reaching us and are being corrupted. Like, the bat anyone who laughs shouldn't <laughs> exist because it only happens from the dark multiverse. Right. But the dark multiverse is either gone or... But this isn't a dark multiverse event yet. Yeah. How could this already right. be happening? Scott doesn't work here yet. So <laughs> how do we reconcile this Batwoman who laughs? We want to make the reference, but we want to deal with the baggage. So we're saying that like... Well then don't make the reference. <laughs> I, I, honestly, when I got to the Batwoman the last page, I guffawed. <laughs> You're just like... Because <laughs> I know what they're doing. You're making fun of it. Yes. You're not saying, oh, Batman Glass is so cool. One of it was a woman. You're saying, no one here is excited to see this. But you also know that marketing will shit their drawers over it. So they're like, yes, you, first appearance of the Batwoman who laughs. You motherfuckers love that Batman who laughs. What if we, she had boobs? Well, yeah. Now it's a collector copy. That's right, boom. And so, that, you know, she's there and they're all like, ugh. But also, you know, they're like, this means that we're failing. Like, it's not working. Right, it's getting worse. It's getting worse before it gets better. <laughs> yes, by that you mean DC? <laughs> no, how dare you, we work for DC. Oh, no, the multiverse but... is deteriorating before her eyes. Yes. If she's showing if, up. If there's a Batman who laughs, <laughs> that means that we're all failing. Yeah, we're losing. <laughs> It's not good. Yep, Dr. Multiverse refers to Thomas Wayne Batman as Dr. Batman. What? Because he is a he's doctor. a doctor. Technically. And you know, you're so distinct from all the other Batmans, like we should, and he's like, don't do that. Don't try to turn me into another Don't make man. me a thing. I'm Flashpoint Batman. Doesn't Bruce Wayne have multiple doctorates? No. No? No, they're all honorary. Oh. Or, he, or he has the equivalent in, yeah. in, in his knowledge, brain he does, but, but he's yeah. not actually. He could be a doctor. He doesn't need the paper trail. I see. And he has the hands skilled enough to be right, a cosmic or yeah. a brilliant surgeon or a safe cracker. <laughs> but instead, I'm going to use those hands to dismantle you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, to punch Spawn. But of course, the reason why Batwoman is here in the first place is because she has sensed the energies of the crack. She's also trying like, to get the crack. Oh shit, if a bat person who laughs gets it, we're going to have to do metal all over again. Let's, right. let's stop her first. So 
The is it some weird <laughs> version of an nth metal or something? No, I don't understand. Don't even worry about the metals. No, the, the crack is the crack generated from the machine that Darkseid made Barry run on. It's it's not metals. Yeah, it's just it's a it's, it's a hole in the multiverse. Thing, yes, brand but, thing. but is a, it like a physical thing that you can touch? Yeah, that's too. Yeah, it's also that. Yeah, yeah, it's a hole in the multiverse, and you can grab it and like wield it like a weapon at the end of the book. And so they're like, we we need. The plan was we're gonna get it and we're gonna use it to find Barry, but they were trying to go through it. No, they were using portals to do it. They they don't want to go. Well, they don't know what's on the other side of it. But if something's on but the other side of it, they to have with, to go through it. Yeah, but they, they need to figure out how they're going to do that in the first place. Like, they don't even understand what the crack is. Yeah, they but, might not go through it. Maybe they want to pull someone else through it. Yes. You know, it's like, we think maybe he's on the other side of it or something. Yeah, so, it's not something to do with him, but we don't specifically know. What, it's so much worse so that much we're going to go through it, because that implies a plan. Yeah. This is like, I know it's important. Well, also because someone needs to go into it and then reveal what the bad guy's going to be in Dark Crisis. So... <laughs> Well, we know that. We, know, well, they don't know, we don't happen. know that yet, but we will. <laughs> right. So the Batwoman in the Labs is trying to get this crack. And they know, that is to say the Justice League Incarnate knows, that if they let her, she will be imbued. We'll have to do death metal all over again. Remember right. when Batman in the Labs got Dr. Manhattan and then he became the Darkest Knight or some shit? <laughs> well, we can't She'll do that. will certainly transform into something. We don't have time for that. I don't want to deal with. Yeah. We don't want to deal with that. We're trying to get to grounded multiversal DC stories. <laughs> and so they're like, well, wait a minute. The House of Heroes has cells that can hold people like the Batwoman who laughs, so we'll try to transport her to the House of Heroes, which they don't know is under attack by all of Darkseid's hordes and his daughter Grail and his son Kalibak. <laughs> and that's why Orion went to the House of Heroes in the first place, is to warn them about Darkseid's impending arrival, or rather his hordes arrival, because Darkseid is already trying to get the crack and fight all the right. cosmic beings that are drawn to its power, like these angels or, you know, Malbolger and stuff. So. They're like, okay, let's do that. And so they transport the Batwoman who laughs at the exact same time as the heroes in the House of Heroes that we don't want to write about or do anything interesting with are like dealing with the incoming invasion. And so uh, she's there and now it's a problem for them because they got to deal with the Batwoman who laughs. Uh, and so what, they sent her there figuring, oh, the people who are left behind. They'll, they'll defeat her and put her in a cell. <laughs> Even if they weren't under attack by Darkseid's minions, they would be that's a really dicey plan. Yeah. Thunderer will definitely beat the Batwoman who laughs. <laughs> if, if Thunderer could, why didn't they call him during Death Metal? If he's so effing powerful. <laughs> and if he's not, then no one will be able to beat him. Because I doubt Mary Marvel will do it, or Dino Cop, who presumably is just strong. Anyway, so she immediately just mops the floor with them. And while they're being invaded, they decide, okay, well, I don't know. Maybe we'll self-destruct the House of Heroes and blow up all of Darkseid's bad guys in here. And as long as we preserve the AI of Harbinger, she can, the House of Heroes can, can, can self-heal. Okay. Like, we'll rebuild it. Okay. Especially with this Batwoman who laughs problem in here. Right. That's, so, that pushed it over the edge. There's yes. no way we can, we can win. Exactly. And so in the effort of transporting Batwoman who laughs and also moving the crack again, the Justice League Incarnate are scattered through the multiversal winds. Oh. Oh, so Dr. Marvel's universe did nothing that time. Well, she did something she, and it resulted yeah. in them being another story. She succeeded, but they weren't able to stay together. Yes. So it is at a terrible cost. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of their ability to continue solving the problem. That's right. Well, I now mean, thank God she's with President solve. Superman. They, yeah. They can have some alone time. And they do. So they all end up on different Earths. Like Captain Carrot ends up on the Youngblood Image Universe. Which is hilarious, because he's from the Zoo Crew, and ha ha ha, he's like a fun child character, but now he's in this gritty, terrible <laughs> image universe. Isn't that funny? Yeah, I guess. Right, that's exactly but the reaction <laughs> I have. You know, they, they team up with Spore, and Spore just does one of these to explain how they're able to deal, because like, okay, Captain Carrot is now in Earth 41, the Earth from Dino Cop and Image and stuff but we can't use all the image characters except for like Wildcats and stuff. How are they going to deal with getting him back or dealing with this multiversal threat or anything? Well, well presumably they'll just wait for Dr. Multiverse to find them all. I guess that's true, but she can't because of the Earth that she and President Superman have been sent to. 
But thankfully, Spore is in a team up with some of these young, I mean, not young blood characters. <laughs> and of course, also, because this is a DC comic, we can make all kinds, we can make like layered jokes. Sure, we can make fun of Rob Liefeld. Yeah, we all are gonna do that. You know, like he has a character who was originally named Bedrock, but then Hanna-Barbera was like, stop it. And so he got changed to Bad Rock. And so we're gonna create a character like him but because DC, he's like a Martian Manhunter version of Bad Rock, and his name is Flintstein. Oh my God. <laughs> you know, and Jeez. characters like Calamity, a Superman character, if he was created by Rob Liefeld, you know, Cal L, but uh -huh. Calamity, get it? Yeah, no, I got it. And here's Spore, and he's just green spawn. And Spore is, a, is basically Swamp Thing. And he's like, I was in a book that teamed up with Captain Carrot and my human body was killed and my soul, soul formed a symbiotic relationship with the green spore, which is like the green, but it also allows me to connect with every fluorosphere across the multiverse. So I'm already brought to speed with the oh great darkness God. and dark side of the crack and everything. So let's go! <laughs> like, oh, so you're one of those powerful characters ever. Because you can communicate and control plants yeah. on any universe. Or create versions of yourself on every Earth. Right? You, you just be, be everywhere No, no, I just know what's going on over there. Oh, that, I see. Oh, that's much less impressive. <laughs> okay. Well done, Spore. Also, he's not really Spawn. Like, he's called Spore, which is definitely the Spawn joke. He's got kind of like a cape made of Right, he's sort of a combination. Of it's actually brilliant because... Okay, so Alec Holland became Swamp Thing. And then Alan Moore, who wrote a couple of issues of Spawn, uh, created the anatomy lesson, which was like, no, Swamp Thing is not Alec Holland. Alec Holland died, and the Swamp thinks he's Alec Holland. Ho ho! But Spawn died, and then Al Simmons is dead, and then Malbolgia brings up the corpse that thinks he's Al, so we can merge those two realities. It's like, no, Al is dead. And it's Alec and Al, we could keep the name. Like, there's, okay. there's, there's see, so there's, many layers. They're so similar characters. So you're reading this, you're like, oh, this is fun. <laughs> I Look guess. They remixed all this crazy stuff. Yeah, like, actually, it makes perfect sense to merge Spawn and Swamp Thing. Hey, who needs a amalgam? <laughs> so, meanwhile, the House of Heroes, of course, shatters on the surface of Earth 7, where Thunderer is from. Sadly, his. Earth was destroyed, or rather, all life on it was. Like, everybody got wrecked. And also, every river and stream and ocean and blade of grass. Like, the whole place is just a husk. Uh -huh. And that's Thunderer's Earth that was destroyed from the gentry and the empty hand from mm. multiversity. That happened. Right. And so now they're here in this wasteland. And Thunderer's like, oh, man, we're in my crappy planet that died. That's oh, it. I don't want people to see this. They're going to think I'm lame. Well, <laughs> <laughs> don't worry, Thunderer. We already <laughs> thought you were lame. No! So, that's why you're here. <laughs> that's why you're dealing with this Batwoman who laughs. Yeah, because Power Girl's also like you. She's from another Earth, too. But we let her live on Earth Zero. You live in the House of Heroes. You can't come to Earth Zero. <laughs> you stay up there. <laughs> it's a quarantine. From lame-ass <laughs> multiversal characters like you. You can interact with our characters sometimes. You can interact with other characters that interact with our characters. Like, you can hang out with President <laughs> Superman because he can hang out with Kal-El. But you can never meet Superman Prime. Anyway... <laughs> So uh, Calvin Ellis also was like, we're going to fix your Earth one day. And I'm like, you're going to fucking clone everybody too? Like, it's, there's nobody here. Yeah, there's not the fix, man. It's all over. Yeah. Whose intestines are those? Okay, so all the parademons in the army from Darkseid died. And that oh. was, and that's represented by one dead parademon. <laughs> Literally, Carol, Calabac goes, oh, they all died. All of them. They're all gone. And we're not going to show them because I don't want to draw all that. How but, come you all survived? Because we're tough. I'm sorry. <laughs> Because we have names. This isn't a movie where you have to hire actors. I know. It's just, a drawn page. Just draw to see where we're all dead. It needs to come out. I need time. <laughs> That's a lot of lines. It's a lot of drawing. A lot of guys. So <laughs> Unalas is like, all right, well, bye. And she leaves because, of course, she's too popular to die, even though she was invented for this book. Well, but, thank uh, God the whole reason I was sent here to be imprisoned isn't going to happen. Yeah. 
I mean, where's she gonna be imprisoned? Well, she's like, the now, whole damn place exploded. She's like, she doesn't matter. She, she's like, I'm gonna strand you on this planet, probably. Well, she didn't know. No, the the, the the heroes blew this place up to stop the invasion of the House of Heroes. Right. If they get our power and our secrets and stuff, you know, all the multiverse is lost or some shit. I don't know. Right. They're just like, we can't let Darkseid win. Blow up the whole goddamn house. Yeah. And also, Batwoman well, last was a monkey wrench. Well, they didn't know that it was their job to contain her, so yeah. that wasn't their plan. Well, no. They were like, that, that was not... <laughs> That's not I, I had other stuff to deal with. Yeah. Yes, the House of Heroes exploded, and that was our fault, but the Batwoman Laughs element, that was all you guys. So we check in with other characters, you know, like uh, Avery Ho from Earth Zero is on Earth 31, which apparently is like a pirate planet or something. <laughs> Hooray! Have we seen that before? I don't know. Sure. Probably. Probably. Maybe. It's, in, it's in the guidebook. There you go. There's a multiversity guidebook that shows you all the planets and what they all are, and Grant Morrison wrote them all down. And the heroes of that Earth that are also pirates save Flash. Avery, and they check out the pirate booty, like the you know the the treasure. And when they open it up, it's copies of the comic book you're reading. Is this the Black Freighter universe? <laughs> no, no, because <laughs> where the Black... they read comic books about superheroes, but are comics that well, no, from because this universe with the, no the superheroes. The pirates in the Black Freighter don't read comic books. We read comic <laughs> books about well, like yeah, but maybe they do, right? Because they're the comic book characters from the Watchmen universe, yeah. maybe in the Black Freighter universe, it's the inverse where <laughs> well, they have regular comic books. Right, or the Black Freighter universe is like that, but because of the Grant Morrison influence, now the Black Freighter universe has changed. The Ooh. influence of superheroes has infused characters like these. Right. But yeah, so they have copies of, of the, book you're reading. the book you're reading, including In Front of Frontier, and the Youngblood comic that Captain Carrot appears in, so it's like an homage to that issue, and I'm like, that's really great. Uh, but also the very issue of Justly Incarnate that you read earlier, and that segues us into Earth-33, which effectively is our Earth, but for one hero that does exist in that Earth, but we don't see him and we don't have to worry about him. But we can also go full Grant Morrison with it, or Cal Ellis, and Dr. Multiverse exist in what is essentially our reality, and they go to a comic book store because Calvin Ellis is aware of what Earth-33 is mm. and how important and powerful comic books are. Well, that was in how... Multiversity, right? Yeah, 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 big time. <laughs> We're the one that, where we are characters in books. <laughs> yes, and the comics that are made in this world affect what we're doing. So all we need oh, to do no. is break into the comic book industry. And then we can make comic books <laughs> that will set up how we get out of here. Right. We're gonna Marty McFly's letter this shit. I'm sorry, Calvin. It's a really caustic industry. Well, yeah, like what Calvin's naivete does not reveal is that there's a good chance you'll never break into the comic book industry. <laughs> But I'm sorry, what's your presence? What have you written before? Yeah, how many followers on Twitter do you have? <laughs> You don't even have a cell phone? Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. <laughs> Thankfully, he is guided by forces beyond his comprehension. So, uh, the, so also time moves differently here because it's the real world. Mm. So like they can live years or months at least in Earth 33 and only pages of time will pass in the like real world of the Just League Incarnate comic book we're reading. Oh. So they have all the time they need in order to break into the industry. Uh, Thankfully, they I mean, he that... is a Superman. I, he has a super brain. Yeah. Well, they use that time to, like, move in together and be together and then break up and then move into their own apartments while also <laughs> trying to break into the industry. There's only been, like, two issues of this I'm book. I'm sorry. At least in that Why are we frame. going this weird route where, like, it didn't work out? I know. I don't know. Because <laughs> that's what happens. Because that's more real. I'm like, I don't know. It's weird. But they're also friends. Like, they tried it out and it didn't work. Like... You know what, I find it actually kind of offensive that you tried to pair up the two people of color in the book. Uh, just, just arbitrarily. Yep. You're the one that tried to do it! <laughs> yeah, but you're the one who thought of it. See, because I'm Grant Morrison again. Anyway, so Calvin runs into Ulrich Saxman, who looks conspicuously like Dan DiDio, and <laughs> he, the, he explains to Ulrich who he is and where he's from, and Ulrich works at DC Comics, and he definitely believes his story, and he's like, I like your moxie, I'm in, I'm gonna help you guys, we're gonna get your comics made, let's do this. Really? Yes. Okay. So if I say to someone in DC, hi, I am an actual <laughs> superhero that you created, you should hire me to create Yeah, I need book. to well, write a book to save my world. 
I don't think there's anyone left at the top brass at DC Comics who would believe you. Well, it should work for in this case because it's like, well, he looks just like him. Right. It's like, so look, look, that's me in your books. See, like, that's, well, that is you've you, been drawing yeah. me. So a cosplayer can just walk up to them and be like, come on. Oh, yeah. a good enough costume. Well, the the reason it works is because it's true, though. Yeah, it does works. he... Does he like fly off the ground or like? He can't. They have no powers yeah, so in this world. They, no, it's the real world. It? He just believes. Them. Wait. He just believes. I so just they believe have no still. powers here. No. Yeah. Well, their powers are diminished, so they they're not they can't be so they're, they're they can't be superheroes. So they have to have sex with each other and like write comic books and break stories and stuff instead of just be, being the superheroes of this world. Right. No, all like explains. You know, Doctor Multiverse is like, wait, wait, you you just told him we were the characters in the books and he bought that. And Oliver's like, yeah! And he even like goes cross, he's like, they're all believe in the power of story. And I'm like, wait, wait, you can't make fun of it. And also <laughs> lean on it. But they do. And like, it, which is it? Yeah, so is it stupid or is it heartwarming? It, I don't understand. It can't be both. It's both. <laughs> so of course the joke is Flashpoint Batman ends up in the zoo crew Captain Carrot universe. So he's like a hard ass, and then, yep. he's uh, punching cartoon characters, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And he's really grumpy, and everyone else is an animal character, and he's dressed like one, but he's a human, right? No, like, that's, that's perverse. Yes, how dare you? You are in the skin of one of our friends. <laughs> so then uh, Avery Flash uses her powers and just ends up there, and then takes him and just collecting everything. She's like that's enough. It, yes, you know, it's only going to do two pages. Once of that. I saw a, a, a treasure chest full of comic books that I starred in, I was like, that's enough. <laughs> well, I also read the issue and I figured out what I had to do. Right. So, anyway, they have a big meeting with Ulrich. That is to say, Doc. So, Doctor. So, Cal and Doctor Multiverse. They break up. They move into separate apartments. It's been like eighty-four days. What do they do for money? Uh, they don't need money. They're attractive. I mean, it's just like it's they hilarious. Just get, yeah, they become they become models. Or they something. come to this universe. They're jobless and homeless. Right. And they just. And they're wearing able, superhero costumes. Yeah, and they start a relationship and they somehow get an apartment and then they somehow get two apartments <laughs> that they can both independently afford. Yeah, with no even security they numbers. just appeared in this universe. I agree. With no job history yeah. or any history. Well, they do, they, okay, no so. No birth certificate. Like, no, what are they doing? Calvin, are they migrant workers? Okay. Like, they wouldn't be able to afford their <laughs> no, own place. They murder someone and they move into their <laughs> yeah, place. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> and they're like, he's not even real. <laughs> it's like, actually, he's the most real. He's more real than you, but no. <laughs> They they hand wave it away. They hand wave it away by saying that Calvin has like a AI thing called Brainiac that he uses. Ah. Brainiac taps into the zeitgeist of that world and comes up with a solution that involves messing with bank code to <laughs> round off Yes. Percentages of pennies. Yes. What? Into an account. It's fucking office space. It's office space. It's and Superman, Superman 3. three. Where are we getting all this money from? And he goes, Brainiac said it got the idea from a Superman movie made here. Something about rounding errors. And I'm like, oh, that's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Well, don't don't mess with those decimal points. Yeah. <laughs> are you gonna get too much too soon? And then no, it's, it's gonna, gonna be a real bad. problem. Yeah. So anyway, I always do this. It's always a small mistake. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this is not a small mistake. <laughs> so anyway, Ulrich has a has notes. Yeah, because the idea is they're like, so we'll write a comic book in which we get saved from our universe and then Darkseid dies or something. <laughs> right. <laughs> and Ulrich has notes. And the notes are Darkseid has to win. And they're like, what? So they run to the office of DC Comics and they have the meeting with Ulrich and they're like, yeah, no, that doesn't work. And he's like, no, actually, Honestly, like, we need the dramatic... Te- like, we're selling comic books here. Like, Darkseid... It, it, it would make more dramatic sense if Darkseid actually beat you. What? And they're like, well, we're not going to do that. And he's like, well, I am Darkseid. <laughs> oh, my God. When he was sitting like that with his fingers, I was like, oh, wait a minute. He looks a lot like Darkseid. He has almost. terrible facial hair that mimics his weird Darkseid head yeah. gear. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. god That's amazing. Damn it. While he's giving his big reveal, Avery and was, Dr. Was Batman. He always Darkseid? Yeah. yeah, no. Darkseid complains. It's like, it took freaking like oh like 84 days to get to this point. Like I, you know, I was I was thrown to the quantum winds. I ended up here. I figured out where I needed to be. I ingratiated myself into DC Comics. I, I <laughs> How did t- you do that? I don't, because Darkseid is. I just I, I'm really good at what I do. I'm creative. Oh yeah, I'm a creative guy. I finally got a chance to like work out some demons of mine. Do you I, understand that my world didn't have giant like vat pits of fire speed yeah. of it? 
I had to create those. Right? I'm good at creating I'm stuff. Yeah, Apocalypse doesn't just happen, okay? <laughs> So do they just murder him because he doesn't have his powers, right? Just no, stab him, just, just choke him, just no, choke him, just do you. No, because he dark side, so he's like, because he also reveals like, you know, he has his powers. Oh, he's like, I have my powers here. But, I didn't use them until just now. Yeah, so Avery and Flashpoint Batman show up, like they're kind of like in between worlds, but oh. they can see them, and she's like, hey, you gotta get out of here. Use your use your powers, Dr. Multiverse. She's like, I can't, I'm in the, the shitty real world, Earth 33. <laughs> and she's like, no, you just gotta believe. She's like, ah. You just gotta believe in yourself. Yeah, and they're like, okay, so we were reading Nimrod Squad, which is young blood in this, in, you know, in the comic book that Captain Carrot's in. I'm like, nice. <laughs> Captain Carrot is on the Earth where the crack is. We gotta go to the shitty image universe mm. to go get the crack, and so let's go. And Darkseid's like, oh no, you don't. You think you're going to win with the power of friendship? And I'm like, oh. <gasps> That's who we say Scott Snyder's books always end with. Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Is Couch. the show the book? <laughs> like, oh my god. Like fucking Dr. Bulber's like, Cal, turn, put that phone down. He's like, no, these three guys are hilarious. <laughs> that's, I don't get it. It's just three Why guys on the couch. Why would they have a show where two of them read comics? <laughs> you know, that show is dangerous. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I prefer the other guy who narrates the books. <laughs> I think the idea is that like Darkseid like brought some kind of like multiversal traveling device that he tattooed on his arm or like masked itself as a tattoo and we conjured it. Everybody reached for it and then it, um, it teleports everybody, including Avery and Flashpoint Batman who are like it, in cross dimensional Is it the grandfather risk. box? Yeah, yeah. And sends them to the shitty image Earth. Right, where they're right in the middle of a battle with Violator. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Awesome. What? How? What? He's not Violator. Yeah, no, that's so that, that's like uh, that, that's, that's Annihilator. Annihilator. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> yeah, so Violator's like, I'm gonna get the crack. And the, the, Captain Carrot's like, Thank God you guys are here. <laughs> uh, it's been real bad. I, don't I have, have to leave. I hate this place. <laughs> I hate it so much. I don't even. I can't tell when everybody's standing up because I can't see any of their feet. Wait, wait, who are these characters? Oh, okay. So like, because we can't use any Rob Liefeld characters, we're making fun of them. But it's in the DC multiverse. We're using Rob Liefeldian and Wildstormian DC characters. Oh. So like Cyborg is here and Nightwing is here, but they're not Cyborg and Nightwing. You know, right, like right. They're versions of them. But Wildcats can be there. But they're wearing their costumes from that era. Yes, like yeah. from the 90s. Yeah. 100%. Yep. Okay, that's fun. Yep. It's a little confusing, but okay. Yeah, I mean, you just, okay. So yes. This book is starting like, to get confusing. Yeah, well. Get, strap in. <laughs> that uh, Nightwing costume is so iconic. I'd be like, why is time traveling Nightwing in this book? <laughs> oh, I know. Like, he's even got the iconic ponytail. I want to say iconic, really, this costume is great. But it is. <laughs> I mean, it's striking and instantly recognizable. Yeah, it is, yeah. is Nightwing. That's Nightwing. Oh, I know who that is. Yeah, yeah, immediately. But also, the, the, the thing is, and it's the problem multiversity, and every Grant Morrison comic ever read. <laughs> and I actually read this recently from like a literary critic, and I was like, thank you. And the critic, whose article will be in the comments down below for you to enjoy for yourself, basically says that the problem with multiversity and in fact most Grant Morrison comic books, particularly subversive critiques that seek to fix the superhero genre, is that it doesn't take into account the other option that people just will stop reading them. <laughs> <laughs> like, it goes, well, obviously, we're all going to continue to read them, and we're all going to continue to spend money on them. So how do we get from here to here? And it's like, you didn't take into account the idea of going, well, I'm just so burned out by them, I'll stop reading them completely, and maybe just play video games instead. I don't think you understand. Uh, how, how, how do you solve that problem? I don't need that. Yes, like, these are all entertainment and creature comforts and extravagances at the end of the day. Yeah. And so how, how do you square that circle, Grant? Right. Like certain people, yes, they're gonna love and continue to read comics. Absolutely. But it's like buying a video game you don't like. Yeah. You don't keep playing. Right. If you have a problem with a video game, you don't wait for a subversive update to show up to contextualize the problem you had with it and then seek to deepen it and your understanding of the game. You throw it away or get a refund. Yeah. These are your options. But is it really that different? Because they're both narrative entertainment devices that you spend money on 
Ugh, nobody's making a metatextual like Halo Six game to like <laughs> to like you maybe know, they rescue the franchise. Right, but, but right, it's just like don't just let's maybe just don't make one for a while. Just don't make one for a while, and then the next time you do, make it cool. Yeah, right. Like but, fix the kind of the problems from the other one. Yeah. But comic books are like no, no, it's, you continuously have to pump out yes. Superman every well, friggin' month. Okay, you can satisfy your creative needs any day. Yeah, you know any month. Right. But you have to sell every month. Yes. That creates the worst incentive, <laughs> right? Where it's like, you have to produce no matter what. Yeah. It has to sell no matter what. Yeah. And you as a creator, that's, well, you'll always get another shot at that. Well, right. But now I needed to sell more this month. Well, thankfully. And for the month after that, <laughs> I'm gonna need to sell more than that. Uh, thankfully, the comic book industry is too small to go in that direction. Right, like, they already that lost is, that battle. Yeah. Like, unlike most business in America, which seems to be this kind of like insane expectation of constant, constant returns growth, yeah. and, ex and expansion, comic books don't have that problem. If we hit that, if we hit a number between this and this every month, you will never get canceled. Yeah, we're yeah. just happy. Yeah. We're happy with stasis. That's, and I, I think that's wonderful. Yeah. I love that concept. You know, Annihilator is going for the crack. And meanwhile, our heroes and Darkseid all get teleported there and they're like, ah! And Darkseid's like, ah, okay. I gotta kill a demon now, fine. He fires It'll Omega Beans at Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, so they battle and you know, Darkseid's like blasting at it. And so all the heroes are like, what are we gonna do now? And so, oh, Darkseid's fighting a big bad. We'll let them do that. Let's all go over here and we'll talk about what we need to do. <laughs> right, we'll come up with a plan. And so they do. It's called a huddle. Yeah. yeah, and their plan is basically, we need to kind of sacrifice Barry. We're not gonna get Barry. Yeah. We, we need- It's not working. It's not working and it's getting worse. Like we're gonna run out of Earth eventually. They haven't even gotten to the crack at any point. No, right. it's over there and uh, we just need to get- we, We've at no point have we come close to achieving our goal. Yes, and- <laughs> Yeah, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. You haven't even gotten to the point where it's like, oh, we're at the crack. Oh, there's no Barry. I guess we should give up. Right. Well, we're, yeah, but at this rate, we're just gonna lose before we figure it out. Yeah, because Darkseid is still like infinitely more powerful than us. So they convince Maya, Dr. Multiverse, to close it. Just close it. Oh, she could always have done that? Uh, yes. What makes them think? Because she's Dr. Multiverse. She was like, in <laughs> she was invented to do this, basically. Yeah, she right. was the one that was apparently controlling she, it. She's pretty yeah. sure I'm she can. It places. Yeah. Yeah, if she can send it, she, she closes it. Right, so you have like, some kind of control over it, so do that. Yes, and uh, you know, so President Superman thinks this sucks. He's like, no, we should find another way, we should save Barry, right. and she's like, that, this is why we didn't work on Earth 33. Yes. Right. You couldn't make the tough decisions. Yeah, exactly. So she goes and she takes it away from Annihilator just as he's getting it, oh. and she attempts to seal the crack, and she can't. And Darkseid's like, that's what I was trying to tell you when I was Dan DiDio. And <laughs> there, she, he's That's like, why I have to win. Yes, only I'm powerful enough to seal the crack. Or at the very least, deal with the multiversal threat that is coming. And that's also why I'm even here in the first place. In fact, everything I've done since like the Great Darkness Saga has been in service of trying to keep the great darkness behind the crack at bay. See, and in fact, that I'm the greatest superhero of them all. Well, because that thing is more powerful than me and I'll, like, at first I thought I'd take the power of the crack and then I'd rule, but it's not really something you can do, so. <laughs> that's not really how it works. That's not really how it works, or at the very <laughs> least I can't, so I need to destroy it or seal it so that we can stop it and then I'll rule anyway. Um, so he talks them into believing yes, that, that there the is only one. a more dastardly power out there behind this crack yeah. and that he's the only hope. That's right. By just words. Mm, yes. The twist is it's actually Barry Allen. <laughs> no, <laughs> uh, but Barry is there uh, right. on the other side. So, well, he's not really on the other side. He's in, uh, we'll get there. Yeah. So, oh God. actually I think they reveal it in Infinite Frontier. There are two multiverses. What? So there's a multiverse of multiverses? Yeah. Well, there's a multiverse. That's the 52. Right. And then there's another multiverse called Multiverse 2. And that one has other Earths on it. Are there 52 multiverses? No. No, there are not. It's, it's very- Yet. There's no. only two so far. There's, no. It's, you'll see. Okay. Meanwhile, on Earth 7, you know, that was the place where the gentry and the open hand, empty hand, 
were uh, attempting to build the Oblivion Machine because it was written by Grant Morrison and right. everything's got to be a machine. And of course, <laughs> Grant Morrison invented, the, you know, the, the the Wish Machine that right. Superman uses in, in Final Crisis. Yep. Well, the Oblivion Machine is the exact opposite of that. It unmakes those wishes and also destroys everything. And uh, so you can't they, unmake a wish. Why not? How dare you? <laughs> But where does it go once you made it? <laughs> so <laughs> they're looking for the Oblivion Machine and they realize that actually destroying Earth-7 or raising it was uh, the Gentry's effort. Because they, they, Gentry and uh, the Gentry slash the Empty Hand destroyed the Earth and also were kind of like quarantined there at the end of Multiversity. Well, it turns out while they were there, they were building the Earth itself into the Oblivion Machine. So they're like, oh no, we have to destroy Earth-7 or the gentry slash the empty hand will use the Oblivion Machine to end everything. Wait. Which is irrespective of dark side. So stuff. where are they? What, they're kind of, so they, did they go somewhere else? Are they like under the ground? Like I don't understand they where are, they're gonna come from. Yeah, they're under the ground like, oh, okay. with the empty hand. Who of okay. course, when the House of Heroes makes that revelation, the empty hand's like, oh, that's true, see, and <laughs> here. <laughs> so we thought it was a desolate planet, but it's not. Well, it is, and it's a weapon. Right, so like, they basically come out of the ground and they're like, <laughs> yeah. Well, he would if he weren't the empty hand. See, if he did that, he'd fill his hand. Right. He can't, he's with another one. hand. Yeah. So that happens. Uh, that, and they're creepy looking. Right. Yeah. They're nuts. Uh, and of course, they were invented by Grant Morrison. So like, they're silly. So of course, there's two stories. There's the heroes of the House of Heroes who are on Earth Seven, and they're dealing with the empty hand and the Gentry, who have revealed that the plan is made uh, into the Oblivion Machine. Oh no. And right. and. The Batwoman who laughs is still there, They're right? Gone. Yeah, she's gone. She she's went gone. to a tube. So she's gone. <laughs> and uh, meanwhile, on the Image Planet, not Image Planet, uh, the heroes of Just League Incarnate and Darkseid are like, I guess we got to let Darkseid win and get the crack. So that's what we're dealing with. And is there a, is, are you supposed to believe that the empty hand is the threat that he's talking about? Uh, no. Oh, okay. Because we've seen him It's already. just an unrelated thing that's also happening. Well, yes, but time. he's also related as the next issue explains. Oh, uh, okay. So, of course, the next issue is actually a direct homage to the multiversity and, in fact, uses literal panels from multiversity and weaves them into this to expound upon them, uh, explaining uh, how there were essentially, there was one thing at the beginning of time and it was nothing, the great darkness. Mm -hmm. And then there was light, and the light created a flaw within that darkness, and from that, the multiverse was born. And so the Crisis of Infinite Earths was actually retconned into being a conflict between the great darkness and the light. And the light is also a character called the Presence, whose god, who was revealed in a Swamp Thing comic during the Vertigo days, and they reference that in this as well. And you're like, okay, so the light is the, is God, the presence. Fine, cool. And so God invents the monitors, the monitor from Crescent and Earth to help to protect against the, the great darkness slash the anti-monitor. After the death of the multiverse, when there was one Earth and then nothing but darkness, uh -huh. the great darkness and the presence slash light struck a deal and they shook hands. Okay, this deal was basically a compromise. You won't end everything, but we won't make more. Because every time we make an Earth, it creates more light. So okay. it's like, okay. now that there's only one reality, we'll, we'll, we'll call it even. And it was just our Earth. Yes. There was no multiverse. Right. That was the death of the multiverse of crisis. Right. So the Great Darkness, of course, is an asshole and was like, I'm going to welch on my deal. So it created aspects of itself and it's represented from a hand of the great darkness and each of its fingers are agents throughout all the would-be crises that sought to bring about the great darkness. And those stories <laughs> it's just one hand. are- It's just one hand? Yeah. yeah. We've got a whole other hand that he could use then. We got Magog, Extant, Superboy Prime, the darkness from that one Cosmic Odyssey story where Darkseid was technically checking his hand to the great darkness, and Mr. Mind. All these different cosmic stories had villains. They're all aspects of the great darkness. Okay. So they're all connected, not just from they being. They all have the same approximate goal, even yes. though each one had a had their own specific goal, but it was all part of. All part of the great darkness' scheme to get back to nothingness. Okay. Cool. Their defeats 
followed by the invention of the 52, the new multiverse essentially, right. uh, pushed the great darkness at bay until Darkseid caught wind of it. Darkseid realizes he's an aspect of the great darkness because he's true evil and understands the great darkness more than most because he is like the devil of the DC universe, or uh -huh. the cosmic devil, because he's like, and also he used to be a multiversal is it, threat. Is it also because he like, broke up into different aspects? The anti-life equation is like opposite of the life equation, which they don't obviously bring it life up. and light. Yeah, they don't bring up the anti-life equation. So anyway, <laughs> it's weird. It should, it what should a freaking missed opportunity. Uh, but yeah, so he's like, the great, the great darkness is kind of like my ultimate goal. So he manipulated Final Crisis to bring about the prophecy which would result in the proliferation of the Great Darkness. How do we do that? Because essentially what they realize after Crisis on Infinite Earths and Infinite Crisis mm. is that the multiverse slash the light has antibodies for the Great Darkness. Like there is something that is conjured as a result of the Great Darkness' schemes to end everything, and that's superheroes. Superheroes are... The white the, blood cells. Yes, the white blood cells or the antibodies of the multiverse. And that's why they're always at the crux of every multiversal event, and it's why it's always about them. Mm. So what we have to do is give the multiverse AIDS. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's essentially what the Great Darkness is looking to do. Like, the Great Darkness is like, well, then now my problem is superheroes. So now, like, and, and that's how it could get more specifically targeted. Like, mm -hmm. I got to deal with Superman. In right. Final Crisis, of course, like, you know. Darkseid failed with the result of Final Crisis and the birth of the New 52, you mm -hmm. know, the, the cool new revamp. Okay. Right. This causes, like, great darkness to be woven into the multiverse and, you know, DC in general. The Great Darkness manipulated Dr. Manhattan into stealing 10 years of their lives. <laughs> Why okay. would the Great Darkness care about that? Oh, because that uh, caused more darkness within the stories of the superheroes in oh. 52. If by darkness you mean the absence of things, sure. Well, and well, also, and like, also it made like, them darker. Also, it's like, like super dark. You yeah, know? It's, like it's gritty more and dark. like gritty and that like was... grounded, and that's that's not what DC is. Wait, it made them like less hero heroic, sort of, kind sort of. of. Yeah, it made Superman and Wonder Woman have sex with each other. Boom. <laughs> You know, we know that's dark because well, I mean, Frank Miller did it. Gave Superman a weird, like, nuclear power. That was weird. Oh, yeah, that was weird. Yeah. Well, it also made him, like, unrelatable and uninteresting, and it gave him that terrible collar. And, yeah. You know. So, anyway, uh, well, that's happening. That was all in service of the Great Darkness. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, could, we can blame New 52 on that now. <laughs> I was going to be like, is the Great Darkness Marvel? Right? Is no. it the darkness that looms over DC? Yeah, you know, well, I mean, they don't want to give Marvel that much power. That's why they're the retaliators. Like, no, no, right. no, Marvel's not that influential. They're an Earth within our multiverse that sucks. Ha! Yeah. Yeah, no, they're the great... certainly not the shadow in which we live. <laughs> <laughs> the Great no. Darkness is more like, uh, more like uh, terrible, like, decision making by yeah, the like people running bad DC. oversight yeah. and like a dwindling comic market and <laughs> yeah and just like culture like just, deteriorating just, and yes and craving like non-heroic characters that's true yeah and demanding that heroic characters be more relatable and therefore more marketable oh and murderous yeah yeah more anti-heroic than right. heroic but as a result of all that that like birthed the gentry and the empty hand and the empty hand of course is an aspect of the great darkness as well and that on one of earth yes <laughs> well within the multiverse and then attacks yeah earth 7 and blah blah right. blah so sort of gives earth 7 outsized importance among the earth that's true yeah but it is destroyed yeah so, you know but, uh, <clears throat> but apparently it was destroyed and is still a weapon. Yes, yeah. yes. So the empty hand starts working on his oblivion machine, of course, which we mm -hmm. have seen the results of. And while the empty hand is working on the oblivion machine, the great darkness focuses back on Earth Prime and summons the Metal Wars and essentially creates an environment by using Barbados and the Great Dragon and all that stuff to birth the Dark Multiverse, which plunges the Earth Zero further into darkness, giving it more power. Mm. Uh, <laughs> okay. Right? It's like, okay, it's you're connecting everything and also taking your shots, but also giving them their flowers. Like, no, it was really important, but it's also not as important as what I'm doing right now. Right. <laughs> Doesn't by creating the Dark Multiverse cause more worlds to be created, which 
gives more light to the universe. But they're dark, and they shouldn't exist, and they're always supposed to be destroyed. We don't really get into the dark multiverse. We yeah, just like talk about how the horrors of the dark multiverse essentially give, you know, it makes the heroes more bleak. The dark multiverse will continue to rot it's, the superheroes right. by- It's by, part of weakening, oh, yeah. It's not brushing your teeth. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it, it's interesting. You're gonna get cavities gingivitis and gingivitis. Yes, here. the gingivitis of the DC universe. Yeah, so th that's part of the, so okay. Yeah, because he does have to explain why creating more stuff would be in the Helpful. interests of something when he already established that like more, more stuff is not what the, the darkness wants. But yeah. It's because the superhero's existence is thwarting all the attempts to destroy everything. So in order to be able to destroy everything, I first have to weaken the superheroes, and in this case, that means making more stuff. Yes. But it, but it's all in service of the, the larger goal. And I like it because also the dark multiverse is inherently fragile anyway, because it shouldn't even exist in the first place. Right. Yeah. So it will be easier to dispatch. You, you could you could take the the cancer metaphor. Thank you. you. I was like, thinking that you, you have to it's grow a stuff. Yeah, it's like it, growing a whole. But it's like oh, how could how could death come from so much growth? Yeah. Well, I'll tell you how <laughs> because it's it's growth in the wrong kind of ways yeah. and it causes problems and for the and it's supposed the, to die, but it won't. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 And in fact, if we kept doing death metal stuff. <laughs> We yeah, kill the body. In DC yeah, entirely. the whole edifice would just collapse. <laughs> oh my god, this is brilliant. Scott's like, I just thought it was cool. I just was trying to have some fun. Jeez. <laughs> Guys, Jesus I didn't Christ. create cancer. Stop. It's not Scott's fault to put the friggin' Batman who laughs at everything. Yeah, it's well, you know, and that's what's so interesting is also like it's not Scott's fault for coming up with Cenobite Batman. It's the audience's fault for making him so effing popular. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> so as a result of the Metal Wars of uh, you know, it moves Earth Zero from being the center of the multiverse, which of course I think they changed earlier. Like I think Final Crisis made Earth the center of the multiverse, mm. or maybe it was Infinite Crisis. Either way, <laughs> one of the previous crises made Earth the center of the multiverse, but or or the universe. But then Death Metal made it so that they that was not the case anymore. Mm. And so instead, like there are two new Earths that are the center of the multiverse. One is Elseworld, which we didn't explore, and the other one's Earth Omega, where the where the Quintessence oh, exist, yeah. and they were keeping an aspect of the great darkness at bay, and then the multiversal dark side killed them, and freed that, and used Barry Allen to crack the multiverse, and now we're here. Okay. Right. And... S oh, and uh, dark side's like, oh yeah, and, and actually, I, uh, this is... This is all part of my pursuit to free slash manipulate the great darkness, but I guess I can't, so I'll need to stop it. And I'm the only one who can, because I'm multiversal and stuff. And so, get out of my way. So he changed his plan in between like destroying the quintessence and now? Yes. He was serving the great darkness, and now he's saying, okay, that was like, that was like, that was like, that was yesterday, man. Yeah. Now I'm all about stopping it. Yes. Well, I have to be, because I want to exist. So then, uh, you know, Darkseid's hordes go through a boom tube, they show up too, they're like, hey! And uh, while they're all talking, the great darkness starts to get, become more powerful and infect them. And it starts with Thomas Wayne, who of course shouldn't even exist, because he's not even from the multiverse, and he's the darkest one there. And so he infects Thomas Wayne and then tries to force Thomas Wayne to kill Dr. Multiverse. Oh. He lies to them about knocking her out so that her powers won't be manipulated, but Calvin knows he's lying because he's Superman, and right. he's like, no, that's a killing Potion juice. Potion or whatever, and so yeah. don't kill her with it, and he's like, ah, and then he starts like vomiting Kirby crackles, and he's like, ah, ha, 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 I'm the great darkness, <laughs> and actually, you guys are so screwed, ha, 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 and, uh, and then Darkseid's like, all right, that's enough of him, and so he may sanctions him. Huh. So he's gone. Everyone's like, oh man, there's no Batman in this book? Well, I guess there's only like 10 more pages, so I guess we're okay. Right. And so, well, I already bought it. And <laughs> yeah, don't he's, worry, he's gonna travel through time or he's something. He's gonna be in, in, he's going back. He's going back to Snow Globe. Ah. Uh. You're going to Flashpoint Beyond now. Bye, Batman. <laughs> you live there now. So then, uh, you know, obviously Dr. Multiverse, she took on the crack. Mm. That was her thing. Remember, right. she was like, oh, I can't do it. I can't possess it for too long. So then Darkseid takes the crack away from her, out of her, mm. and then he wields it like a weapon. <laughs> and, uh, and then he leaves. I'd be hesitant to call it a weapon. No, oh, but it is a weapon. <laughs> so then he leaves to go to Earth-7 to fight the Empty Hand and presumably defeat the Great Darkness. <laughs> so uh, so he's just like, okay, bye. I'm going to go do this. Yep. Don't worry, I'll do it. Yes, and they're like, 
And so they all stand around and talk to each other about what they're going to do. And then, meanwhile, you know, the gentry fight Darkseid's hordes and children while uh, Darkseid goes to face the Empty Hand. And the Empty Hand's like, nah, you're not going to beat me. And Darkseid's like, oh, yes, I will. So then Darkseid gets big, and then he stabs the Empty Hand in the heart with the Great Crack. I don't know why I'm calling it the Great Crack. It's just the Crack. It's just the Crack. It's just the Crack, capital C. And uh, the Empty Hand's like, you idiot. That's exactly what I needed. That was the last component. And so the empty hand takes the crack. He's like, my hand is empty no longer. Ha ha, I have the crack in it. And so then he... You could have had anything in that hand. <laughs> yeah, but it's the... It's yeah, the, but I want the crack. And so he takes the crack and then essentially you wants to use it to complete the Oblivion machine. Like the Oblivion machine needed one more component. And it was the crack. <laughs> that way I can destroy like all, everything. Why is a crack a oh. physical thing? Right. I'm just a little confused. I thought there was something behind it. Yes, that too. What is behind it? Barry Allen. Well, like, yes. what is it? Right. Well, because they keep using it, but they won't universe, explain. But also, it's like, a thing that you could grab. But like, in what way does Only, it complete the Oblivion Machine? Oh, you know, because the Oblivion Machine. Shut was, up, Ethan. <laughs> well, it was invented by Grant Morrison, so it's not like it's a widget or doodad. You know, the machine is made of gears and stuff, but they're like cosmic. So it's like if I put this crack in there, it'll, there's clearly like a crack-shaped hole in this component where I need to put it in. Well, just like Barry show that. ran on a machine and powered it up. And then made a crack in the multiverse. This is now just like energy. Yeah. Hence why it looks like lightning. It, sure. Yeah. So the empty hand then like squishes Darkseid with his giant feet. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the heroes are like trying to reactivate the House of Heroes because then if they do, they can use it to go to Earth-7 and leave. Uh, meanwhile, um, the Great Darkness has possessed the heroes within the House of Heroes, and so the heroes of Just League Incarnate have to fight the Great Darkness-possessed version of the House of Heroes. So it's just zombies, but they're intelligent. That, that would be like the Blackest Knight characters from Necron. Uh, and maybe there's a reason they look like that. So Flash finds her courage and embraces the name and then uses her powers to run at all the heroes of the House of Heroes and eject... She, she connects them with the Earths they're from and that purges the Great Darkness from their souls and then all the heroes are joined and they call themselves the Just League Incarnate. So then they're like, all right, let's go help Darkseid or something. I so he squished. Yeah, but he, he got better. <laughs> no. Okay. So then... It's, it's not that easy to kill Darkseid. No. Yeah. He is. <laughs> so then the Empty Hand uses the crack on the Oblivion Machine, which of course is the whole planet they're on, and then he proceeds to conjure a portal through the Oblivion Machine and invites Darkseid to come into it and check out what he's been pursuing the whole time and what he's been hoping to defeat. And Darkseid's it's like... It's my man cave. Yeah. <laughs> So we can hang out and have beers in here. <laughs> He's not actually inviting me to, hang, to bro out, but he is like, come see what you were, if you were to beat me, see what you were up against. Come on in. So then Darkseid's like, okay, and he runs in there, and the Great Darkness, he's just in, in an empty void, and the Great Darkness like speaks around him, and he's like, you idiot. Like, you're a piece of me. Like, I made you. You can't beat me or wield me. <laughs> That's not how that works. That's not how that works. And he's like, oh, and then he just falls into oblivion. So then- What? Uh, yeah. Darkseid falls into oblivion in this book. Yeah, well, within... In this, in this, in this road to another book book. Yes. Don't worry, it's not the end of Darkseid. Uh, of course. Uh, Darkseid's children and hordes, there's more parademons, they come out of nowhere. I know they're oh. all destroyed, but now they're back. Or there's more of them. But uh, his children are like, Darkseid's dead. That means you're in charge now. Who's you? Orion. Oh. Who huh. was with the House of Heroes. And they're like, you're in charge now. And then everyone cheers for Orion. You know... Grail eggs them on, and they're like, yeah, Orion is now, yeah. <laughs> and they're like, well, what are we going to do about this Oblivion machine? Because Dark Side has to be, because Orion has to deal with Darkseid's legacy. And, uh, you know, he's like, I, whoa, what? <laughs> Meanwhile, they're like, what are we going to do? And Thunderer is like, well, I'm from here, and I'm powerful, so I guess I'll destroy the Oblivion machine. And Superman's How? like, no, don't do that, because, like, this, that's your whole plan, and I promised I'd fix it. And he's like, that's it's fine. It's, it's fix what? It's destroyed. Yeah. What are you going to do? Bring people back like, to just, life? Just leave. I'll destroy the Oblivion Machine. You guys go and try and complete your mission. Go save Barry Allen. I kind of don't believe you, Thunderer. No, he will. He's fine. <laughs> so they run and, you know, use Avery's newfound... Save Barry Allen from where? From the other side. You haven't even seen him. No, but, like, I feel his energy. 
you know, using my flash powers. Where? Throughout. Where are you gonna go? I don't understand. I run. Yeah, the crack's gone. We're gonna go into the into the into the hole that uh, the empty hand made using the crack. Oh, because that's where Darkseid went. Let's let's all let's go. But Avery will run, thinking of Barry, creating energy that will hopefully allow us to slip through and onto the other side to get Barry. Right, because now there's like darkness in between, but Barry's still on the other side of it. Yes. Okay. That's okay. And I guess the whole idea of like where he is is kind of like the whole point. Like yes. it's a big mystery of the yeah. book as to like where he is and what it has to do with this like darkness exactly. thing. Okay. So they run and they end up in a picturesque classic comic book looking suburban town where they bump into Wallace West, who is a young boy who is like, oh, you guys are dressed like my uncle. I guess you want to go talk to him. Come on. So he takes them to no. Barry Allen's house, where Barry Allen's dressed like Flash. Is this like a concept place? They're on Earth Flashpoint One. <laughs> what? Flashpoint One. Flashpoint One. Not, Not Flashpoint Flash One. Right. Flash dot one. Okay. So Avery tries to embrace Barry. Barry's like, I don't know you. I'm married. Get away from me. And she's like, no, no, I'm, I'm Avery Hill. I'm, I'm the Flash. From your earth, it's like, oh, I'm the Flash too. That's cool. And they're like, what is happening? And Calvin's like, well, I'm Superman, Barry. Nice to meet you. And he's like, I've never heard of a Superman. And they're like, what? And they're like, well, listen, we need to take you and bring you back home. And he's like, I am home. I've never been happier. I, and he doesn't know them. He doesn't and if you all right. touch me, I'm going to punch you all in the face. Essentially, uh, Superman's like, listen, we'll, we'll figure out whatever crazy you've got when we get back. So let's go. And he's like, Get away from me. And he punches him and then just runs back into his house and slams the door. <laughs> and they're like, okay, that was weird. And. Okay, so we're in like the mindscape or something. No, we're on an earth. <laughs> yeah, but it's like an earth like that caters to Barry, like hiding yes. from the from, reality. From reality. Yeah. So they're like, they're, they're like, what do we, how, how do we calculate our next move? And Dr. Multiverse sees a man floating down to her and she's like, oh, Jesus Christ. And Pariah appears. Oh no! <laughs> what? And Pariah goes, this universe is too fragile for crossovers. What? What? We can't have crossovers here. He says we can't have crossovers here? Yeah, basically. But he's like, but you can, you can all be just as happy as Barry Allen if you take my hand. Oh no. And Dr. Wells is like, no, no, don't touch him! And so they, she creates a, she creates a portal and gets them out of there. She just uses her multiverse powers and gets everybody out of there. And Pariah's like, that's great. And so then they Good. leave. Yes. So like, okay, so that didn't work. No. Barry's gone. Yes, Barry's on Earth Flash Point One. And so we're and everything's hunky dory him. there. Yeah, he's got everything he's ever wanted. His mom's alive. He's got. Other flashes, but they're not more relevant than he is. His mom's alive, but he's also Flash. Yes. He gets to be Flash. He gets to be married. He gets to have a house and stuff and like Eobard that. And Thawne is not screwing up his life. He doesn't. Even, he probably doesn't even exist on this planet. Like, what are you talking about? So yeah. Uh, so the portal starts to come apart while uh, you know Thunderer summons the World Storm and destroys his Earth while the House of Heroes reforms. And then he jumps onto it and they leave. And they're like, whoa! Uh, so while they're flying through the bleed, they bump into the heroes of Justice League Incarnate who are like floating around from having been separated from Flashpoint One. And so they get sucked in to the House of Heroes and they ask them what's going on and they're like, that was weird. They fixed the House of Heroes that fast? Yeah, well, you know, it's like... Because it was wrecked. Yeah, it's but, powered by like an AI that's like super powerful, whatever. Yeah, the super powerful Harbinger AI. And also I think uh, Flash helped a little bit when, like to help get it started. Right. So Dr. Multiverse is like, that, uh, that was more weird and scary than it looks. We should worry about this. Mm. And Superman's like, okay, well, we're, t we're not relevant enough to solve this problem. We need to go to Earth and get the real heroes. <laughs> we need real Superman and stuff. Oh There's one God. thing I've learned from being in this book. I can't solve anything. We're not capable of solving this problem. Literally, as if to punctuate it further, he says, Dino Cop, set course for Earth Zero. Like, Dino Cop, your most useful p component in this story is to drive us to the real Batman. And we'll go get him. And so, uh, Pariah... Boy, we, we, we really made a mess of this. Oh. We, we, we pissed off. Oh, yeah, well... Uh, pissed, pissed away. Darkseid explains, like, my plan was perfect. My plan that I've been hatching since, like, Final Crisis to lead to this point was mucked up by you guys getting involved and fighting this shit. 
If you just let me get the crack like I wanted, I would have beaten the empty hand and stuff, which of course he wouldn't do. No. But the heroes don't really understand that, so they're like, well, we, we, really, we really screwed up. Right. So meanwhile- It's really like you couldn't have done anything to yes. affect the outcome at all. Exactly. So Pariah <laughs> uh, gleefully exists within the void of the Great Darkness, within that like hole, the portal, and he proceeds to talk to the Great Darkness and say like, if you keep your promise, if you keep your, if you keep your promise to me, I'll make sure that your will is done. And you see that like dark side it starts to be enveloped in these insane chains, chains we saw in Infinite Frontier. Hmm. And uh, then we see that dark side is added to a menagerie of distinct looking silhouettes as part of the Great Darkness's army, which will continue. They say it's in Dark Crisis, but it doesn't. It's actually in a Just Sleep book. So we'll talk about that next time. But uh, we can see the dark side is added to a menagerie of characters, which includes people like Necron, and Neron, and Eclipso, and Doomsday. And all these dark people. Just the, just, these, just the big bads the of various stories. The biggest bads of the DC universe are all gonna be in one story together. And I guess that's pretty cool. Well, that's a good idea. And that's Pariah's plan? Yes. Well, Pariah is, is, part of is working along with... Presumably that is the plan, is that Pariah is working in tandem with the Great Darkness. And the Gentry. The Gentry were just a means to an end via the Empty Hand to make yeah. the Oblivion Machine, but they are I'm not sorry, the Empty anymore. Hand. Yeah, the Empty Hand is what yeah, I'm saying. Yeah, the yeah, yeah. Hand is the... yeah. And I think he's here too. And even characters of like the Upside Down Man from Just League Dark and stuff. It's like, oh, new characters too. And the Bye Bye Man. The Bye Bye Man. <laughs> Sadly, no Batman who laughs. Now, look. Oh, no! I'm fine with no Batman who laughs, but I'm also like, he was pretty big. Yeah, it's like, a little weird it, to take like Neron. <laughs> I know. Well, he is the devil. Yeah. And, or Necron. Right? Necron deals with dark stuff. Yeah, but it's I like know, but... these are the villains of their respective events, like Blackest Night, yeah. The Darkness Within, Eclipso, uh, Underworld Unleashed. Yeah, Blackest Night was just the like Dark Knight Metal of its of own Green time. Lantern. Right, like that's. I don't know. Blackest, it's, it's, Blackest Night was. Uh, Blackest Night was, the ancient being Necron creates the Black Lantern ring yeah, and resurrects was, all the dead heroes. It was like a serious, yes. important event, and he was the bad guy. Uh, yes. Well, that's what all of them. Just are. like Batman Who Laughs was the bad guy of, of death his metal and death dark death metal. metal. I agree. Yeah. But you could say that that's the case for a lot of different things. Oh, the Joker was the big bad of like when Jason Todd died. Well, yeah, but, but it that, wasn't that, like that, a universal. Didn't involve Superman or anything. Right, I get it, but right. there there are cutoffs for this. Yes, yes, that's true. They're making decisions. They're like, you know yeah. what? Let's not rely well, on the Batman and, who laughs. Yeah, let's let him Probably rest. Probably because we'll pull him in later. <laughs> no, he's not. Batman Who Laughs, spoilers, doesn't appear in any of Dark Crisis whatsoever. Interesting. The closest thing we get is Batman Who Laughs who's in this and nothing else. Well, good. I know. Well, and it's like, they're sticking to their word. Like, you know what? And actually bringing back the Batman Who Laughs for that one story, that the, his last story, makes it have more weight. Like, good. Let him rest. Mm. But... Clearly you can resurrect characters and stuff. Yeah, it, it just, would it, make sense for him to be it's, in it's, it's a strange omission. It is a it is a glaring omission, yeah. but also, you know, look. This is being it's, made by Joshua Williamson. He's like, I helped with Death and Dark Metal. Right. I don't remember it like all these other stories that I literally read right. and enjoy. These are all like these, these are, are classic all, characters. Yeah, I'm digging things well, out of the past. And yes. not only that. Yeah. You don't want to put the Batman and the laughs in there. It's always going to be like some weird, crazy He'll thing. He'll overshadow it. That's yeah. the other problem. Yeah. You know, if they put Batman and the laughs, the deal would have been like, hey, also, make him the biggest bad. Like, have <laughs> him betray them or something. Right, right. Yeah, it's like, yeah, no, Williamson's like, nope, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to head that off of the pass right now. Yeah. And just say, he's not even in it. And I guess like, oh, it, that's too bad. It would you know who weird. the biggest bad in this book is? Dark side. Yeah, and he's a And cult. now he's part of the army. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That should make you excited, I guess. This is also the most complicated one of all of them. Hmm. I prom. well, yes. This one has the most layers and the most, like, tangents. Mm -hmm. I promise the next and two are more direct. Okay. And these guys don't appear in it at all. <laughs> Thank right. God. They're like, okay, so here's the ball. Right, we'll go to go over there. And, and, and it's actually kind of funny to see what happens when Superman's like, "Thanks, guys, I'll handle it from here." <laughs> yeah, I'm sure you do. I'm sure. <laughs> I'm sure you, you immediately solve the problem. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Uh, so 
that's it. Justice League Incarnate. It is a shameless multiversity sequel that also justifies its existence by tying in with this. Like, it is like Dennis Culver wanted to do a multiversity sequel. And Josh Williamson's like, well, I'm doing a Dark Crisis. So how about we square that circle by connecting them? And you know what? That's the best of both worlds because that's the only way you're going to get everybody to read Multiversity 2 not written by Grant Morrison. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think it delivers the, the explanation and gymnastics involved to explain the Great Darkness and connecting it with every single DC event from the beginning and tying it in with directly with Christ of the Earths and also explaining how superheroes work within like the DNA of the universe itself really works for me mm. because sometimes I think to myself in my darkest of hours <laughs> why is it always about the superheroes like I'm mm -hmm. reading a superhero comic but like why do you think it's always about them so we'll see you guys next time with another episode <laughs> if you want to copy this it's in the comments down below pick it up it's I mean you need to read it in order to get Dark, dark Crisis you don't really but like it's fun to go on the journey I think yeah I enjoyed the ride it's not bad and I, I, I had a fun not time. for me. I understand. <laughs> Look, I know. You know. We just got through talking about Venom, and now we're talking about the multiverse of DC. Yeah. It, it's, it's, it's apples and oranges. I understand. You know, this was a lot easier to get through than I thought it was going to be. Hmm. I deliberately avoided talking about it for a couple... I kicked this can down the road a couple of weeks. Yeah. On purpose. Right. But it's I, hard because so many of the characters are... Ones we don't know anything about. And their powers are... Nebulous. Like right. they shoot things they, and yeah. open stuff. And it's just kind of like what's happening. But because the book is entirely that and can only be that, it's like, I don't know, how deep am I going to like dive into yeah. like how... How it works. How their powers work. Clearly, they it doesn't make any right, sense. Like Darkseid's punching an angel right now. <laughs> right, right. Well, Darkseid's also showing up everywhere that they go. That's true. And yeah. it is, it's a pretty simple premise. Yes. Like, the heroes want to save Barry Allen, and Darkseid wants to end everything, and they keep bumping into each other and stopping each other from doing it until eventually they team up and go, Look, you do your thing, I'll do mine, okay? And then they do. And then the best part is, they will fail. They will fail. <laughs> <laughs> it's Barry true. says no, and Darkseid's captured in chains. That's right, that's right. Yes. By pariah. <laughs> yeah. I don't, I don't know if pariah, yeah, yeah. Right? I didn't see Pariah coming. No, few do. <laughs> I never see him coming. Williamson was like, no, he- I he, should have, because he was at the end of that. He does show up at the end of this, yeah. and it's like, what? Yeah, no, because Williamson's like, no, Pariah should be a big, cool character. Or at the very least, uh, removing the word cool, he should be a big character. He should be a threat. Hmm. Yeah, and, imminent. And no one uses him, like, because he's complicated and stupid. Like, he, nobody thinks to use Pariah. <laughs> so it's like, let's make him matter now. Hmm. And I'm like, fine. So, All right. so, but it better pay off. Oh, it will. Because right now it ain't paid off. No, Dark Crisis will pay it all off. I promise. Well, we'll see you guys next time on another episode. I'm Sal. I'm Ethan. I'm Ben. Keep reading. When was Dark Crisis? Uh, a couple years ago. Okay, so this is already ancient history. Yeah, but nothing has contradicted it. Okay. Not that it really needed to be. Right. Josh actually ends up shepherding the whole line from Infinite Frontier all the way into where we are at the taping of this episode. Dark Crisis is, you know, okay. it's a good, it's a like, you know, channeling point that gets you to the next period, but uh, they are, they're not technically related. You know, it's more like they're chapters. And Dark Crisis is kind of like the end of one book series and then we-, we Other stuff goes we, on. We do something else. And we rarely reference Dark Crisis. Which I think is kind of neat, because it's like, no, we did it. You know what? Dark Crisis. Done. That's okay. In another five years, they'll reference it. Yeah. <laughs>